Good morning, everybody. My name is Dr. Patrick Flynn, and welcome to this morning's A Different Perspective. I am so excited that you guys are here today for multiple reasons. Number one, it's a beautiful Saturday morning here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Was it June 25th? Yeah, it's uh, been a fantastic month. I've got some, so many great things to share for you for what happened this week. But then also, I'm so very excited because we have a special edition show that has been requested by us. So I will get to that in a short time. But I'm so excited for the things that we are always bringing to you because uh, we would like to listen to what you guys need to hear. And thank you for all the emails. And that's one thing I wanted to start off with very quickly is I literally, I counted them up this morning. I received roughly 1,700 emails this week and with a combination of our Instagram messages. It was crazy. It was legitimately crazy. I appreciate all those. Uh, just even this morning when I jumped on, I had about 150 uh, emails just from the request for a thyroid lab. I talked about the Instagram. Uh, really, you can go check that out. But uh, I just let you know, know that we take your emails, we take your messages very seriously. That being said, behind the camera that uh, you won't see today, but Dr. Patrick, you know, our wonderful intern who is uh, behind the scenes, he's going to be typing on the Facebook page and YouTube. Brandon, which one are we on again? Remind me. Website. Website? YouTube and Wellnessway. YouTube and Wellnessway Facebook. So we're on our adp.thewellnessway.com. So a lot of you guys watch there, but you're also on the Wellnessway the page live, the Facebook page, and also the YouTube page. So you guys can see it. So, but our key right there is the website thewellnessway.com. That's where you can find every episode regardless of what happens on Facebook or YouTube. But we have all the things up there. Our Wellness Way uh, page has just been absolutely incredible. All of our team uh, brings our stats every month to me and I'm just flabbergasted how many new people subscribe to the website. You can subscribe and get our newsletter. If you have not seen our newsletter, I can honestly tell you, I had a wonderful time with our investigative journalist uh, yesterday, Betsy, Aaron, Lauren. Um, it's kind of great <laughs> during the time, just tell you a funny story because I love stories. Um, we went down to my favorite bakery, Happy Bellies, and uh, uh, went down to um, Appleton and Aaron has never been there. So we grabbed the computer, uh, her and, and a couple of, other of us went down and we worked on some articles. So don't forget to go up there. She just put a wonderful article up about Tribulus, just put a wonderful article up about Chastery, talk about some other things coming out. These investigative journalists not only do great detail when it comes to our wonderful articles, but also some great things that will absolutely blow your mind away. And our newsletter is fantastic. It covers so many different things. Plus you get to see a recap of the show and also in written form. So thank you all of you to put so much effort into that. All right, so our website's amazing. That being said, but guess what? You can see from here, we do have our YouTube pages for The Wellness Way, but also have our Facebook page, so go check them out. We still have not gotten kicked off of them. <laughs> Those are kind of nice. And we're hoping that we continue to put good information out, that people see it, and, uh, um, and it's getting massive amount of hits. But I was surprised. Uh, we started to do reels for the first time just a couple weeks ago. And you can see if you go on my Instagram page, no joke, we have almost 100,000 people that follow us on Instagram. Uh, where, like I said, we're in the mid-90s now. But what does, we are putting constant reels out there, also on YouTube and also on uh, Facebook. It's just that, once again, my, my biggest page, the Dr. Patrick Flynn Facebook page, was shut down about Christmas time, and they still have not allowed it to come back due to the fact, I guess, I upset somebody through that process. So <laughs> that's okay. We, we enjoy doing that because here's what happens. It's going to, from my, one of my favorite graphics ever created right here, it talks about having about a different perspective. You know, I will tell you, we're going to talk about some things today on this. No joke. You're going to have people that, that look at it and say, I see a circle. And people that look at it, I see a square. And they will argue to be on a shadow that they are right. And I can honestly tell you, I like to have the bird's eye view going, hey, guess what? <laughs> it's a cylinder with a flashlight. And both of you guys are looking at it. And you may see your perspective. And I'm cool with it. But the fact is that people do have a different perspective because all about perspective. So we're going to share that today. We're going to share that big time. And I'm, and I'm okay with people's perspectives. I really am. See, I, the one thing about a different perspective is the mainstream people, the mainstream media, the mainstream medical field, they have a perspective and they jam it down their throat and they want you to accept it. We see this in cultural things. We see this massively in healthcare. We've seen it massively in healthcare over the last couple of years. But the last couple of years aren't really different from what's happened over the last 30 years since I've been involved in healthcare. It's just the fact that what they've done, they haven't had the power that they had that they can shut things down and force people to do this and have government involved in that way. So you need a different perspective. 
Uh, and then even though they tried to shut you down as far as you know, Facebook page or YouTube page away, the one thing that's nice and, and people say, Doc, what makes your, co your company so powerful? Why is it that even though they tried to slow you down or shut you down, you know, why, why is it still growing at such a rapid rate? Because the nice thing is this, um, this is not just a show. Think of this way, we're not trying to get publicity from a show, we're trying to share what we are doing clinically every day. That's the cool part. And in records amount of people are coming to our clinics all over the world because the perspective they've been getting has led them to be sick. Uh, I recently was interviewed on a podcast, I think I shared this story not too long ago. I was recently interviewed on a podcast and the guy actually, no joke, he knew health quite well. He really did, I was actually thoroughly impressed. But you know how he knew health well? Is he got thyroid cancer and ripped out his thyroid. Now, he didn't realize that there was something out there uh, that is a different form of medication that would be safer and stuff. So we were just dialoguing about it a little bit that way. And I said, listen, you want medical advice? Go get your medical advice about levothyroxine or Synthroid. But you might want to try a different medical professional that may give you some armor or an Throid. And guess what happens? He's like, oh, didn't even know those existed. And the one thing that was interesting though, and I set a perspective to him uh, that kind of even stood back and said, I didn't even thought of it that way. And Travis was sitting in, we were sitting in the back talking about it. And Travis looked at me when he said it, remember that? All of a sudden he's like, uh, the guy's like, oh my goodness. I, I said this to him, I said, you know, when you found out that you had thyroid cancer, where did you go to? He goes, well, I went to my doc. And I said, the same doctor that led you to get cancer? I said, isn't it funny? You go to a doctor to be healthy, and then all of a sudden you get cancer by under the care of the doctor that you're healthy on, and they're telling you, listen to me. I, it's all about what I do to you. I'm the expert. And I'm like, and I said this to him, being respectfully, because it's figuratively speaking, I'm like, why didn't you walk up to him and punch him in the face? Do you understand? I'm like, I, I trusted, I put this in your hands and you led me wrong. As a guy, we want to punch you in the face. You know, Sam, we're gonna talk about that today in our man show today. You know, Sam? But of course, you know, he's like, I didn't even think about that. I went right back to the same doctor that led me down a bad path. And that's why a different perspective is so critical. It's why, no joke, the last two years, the medical profession has led people down the wrong path. And they've teamed up with our government to lead you down the wrong path. So you need a different perspective. So it's quite interesting. So we're gonna have a fun show today because it's a mixed show based on the email I got from somebody. And for you guys that didn't know, uh, some weeks ago, I had Travis uh, Frisk, the different Travis the, that's behind the cameras and stuff on here. And then we were talking about some men's stuff and things like that. And I got a ton of emails saying, uh, hey, can you have uh, a little bit of a man show talking about some things? I'm like, from a testosterone perspective and let you know what you guys really think about it. So I decided to do and put together uh, a group of us to share some things. Now, I will pre-warn you, uh, for example, is we're gonna share our views and our opinions on it that way. And it's okay if you disagree with us um, and it's okay if you don't. It's just that we're gonna share some things. It's all about perspective. And um, there's one thing that I said the other day that was so key to when I did the interview uh, for the new movie coming out for Fertility with Robert Kennedy Jr. and Andrew Wakefield. You know, it was interesting, I was sharing my perspective on fertility and the things I've created to actually look at the, a very different perspective when it came to it that way. And, and I know what people do. They'll argue um, based on what emotion instead of actually what the content is. And when you cannot argue the message, they have to try to discredit the what? The messenger. And I'm like, all right, that's fine. So fertility is all the all time, you know, trouble of having get pregnant if you're even your 20s or 30s. And so they're gonna say the experts say this. I'm like, so I got a question for you guys. How we doing? Do you understand? And it's quite interesting because, you know, deal with testosterone a lot and deal with males a lot, you know, and deal with some of the cultural things that are literally destroying men's testosterone. I just got a question for all you guys. How we doing? You think I'm joking? I get thousands of emails from women saying, you know, man, I wish we had testosterone driven real men out there. So we're gonna talk about it. You know, Sam, because you know what, ladies, how you doing? You know, Sam, they have demasculated men so much. It's absolutely crazy. And I'm telling you, I'm gonna teach you about a shower doubt today. And I've decided to bring some real men on here and say, listen, this is what man is really like. And ladies, you can fight it all you want. You really can. But if you don't understand what we think about, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and actually, 
truly, and I'm gonna use a sports now to start it off, which is gonna set the whole tone, and then we're gonna talk about some things, and we're gonna dialogue, so you don't wanna miss that part, okay? So let's go over that email that's gonna start this whole process, and here's where it started. Here we go. Dr. Flynn, I found you on Instagram and love your information. It's truly life-changing. Then I went to your YouTube, which I don't even have an account, and there is even more great content because you explain things in longer lectures, which really gives me a different perspective. My question is, I see you speak a lot on organ meats and the glandulars, but do not see a lot of videos on them. So can you explain the difference? Plus, my husband was listening to one of your videos next to me, which was a surprise because he doesn't usually do that. And he said, it's nice to listen to a man that's not afraid to be a man. So you can give him a, so, so can you give him a shout out his name is Greg, and share more of your advice as a man that a lot of women need and want to hear. Thank you for what you do, and I pray for all the haters out there that their minds open up to a different perspective. Sincerely, Chloe and Greg. Greg, shout out to you. You know, saying I know this happens a lot. Women do say this a lot. They, Doc, I'm listening to your videos, and my husband, you know, just kind of listens over my shoulder, and he's like, "Hey, that's actually some pretty good stuff." Well, I'm hoping. That ladies, if you're watching this today, that your man's over your shoulder because he's going to gain some great confidence. And ladies, you're going to benefit massively because I will tell you this. If a man actually is a real man, guess what's going to happen? You will benefit greatly. You really will and stuff like that. Um, we're going to talk about some things that are going to set it up that way. And I'm going to be speaking to men because this is ingrained in them. It's a hormonal aspect. It really is. And therefore, there's some things that I'm going to share that are going to be wonderful for them because if they're not having a certain drive that way, they actually could have some healthcare problems that need to be you know, figured out. So, as something that was brought to my attention, people say, Doc, they said, talking about organ meats and glandulars. It's quite interesting. You're right, I apologize. We are doing a wonderful job uh, with our team behind here of shooting certain videos. We will be putting out more videos on organ meats and glandulars because I think it's one of the best things that you can do in your diet. And I don't really talk about you know stuff a lot about glandulars because I want people to eat organ meats. But since you asked, we're gonna talk about it. So what we're gonna do is this, and I love this graphic. I wanna thank our amazing graphics team for creating this. If you look at gla glandulars, what really is a glandular? It's just an organ meat that's actually put into a capsule form. That's all it is. That's really all it is. It's important to understand it because once again, you look at that, it's just like it's some good old raw liver that's dehydrated, put it in a higher concentration of pill, and then you take it. Why? Because a lot of people don't want to eat them. Um, I can honestly tell you, that's what the term supplement is actually come from, is if you don't get it within a diet, you need to supplement with it. Let me give you an example. We have fat soluble vitamins, you know, vitamin A, D, K, and E. Now, if you don't eat them, you need to supplement with them. Now, I'd rather see people eat them, and we're gonna talk about this, and we're gonna go over this, and so then people say, what is the glandular doc? It's just basically, as you saw, imagine as a, let's, uh, Travis, let's go back to that graphic, okay? If you look at there, there's, once again, there's some liver there, all right? It basically, imagine taking that liver, dicing it, cutting it up, dehydrating it, higher concentration, put into a pill form. You see, I'm, that's what, so imagine there's a heart there. Imagine there's a kidney there. Imagine there's an adrenal gland there. Imagine there's, a, there's an ovary there. Imagine there's a testicle there, okay? Come on back, Travis. If you think about this, is it's just a butcher putting together all those organs and then, once again, manufacturing them to put them into a pill form. Because I know this. I, the, I may be a little bit weird. Um, even though I do take glandulars on a daily basis, I still try to eat organ meat every day. Every day, every day, you know what I'm saying? It's something that you consistently with, you get mass amount of nutrients that you cannot get from plants. Now, it's not saying that you don't need plants. I know there's uh, carnivore people that say you don't need any plants and there's vegans say you don't need any meat that way. I'm kind of in the middle, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what I mean in the middle is I see some massive benefits uh, to grass-finished organ meats and I see some massive benefits to prepared vegetables. I do have my opinions on it, once again. Um, I would rather see somebody eat um, steamed cauliflower than raw cauliflower because, believe it or not, it, the nutrients are dramatically changed when it's steamed. There's more bioavailable. It's like this. You ever want to look at a vegetable, excuse me, a fruit actually, that is fantastic for you, but if it's not cooked, you don't get a lot of nutrients? Do you know what it is? A tomato. People don't realize, if you actually eat a raw tomato, you don't get a lot of nutrients. You really don't. Um, you need to actually prepare it. You need to steam it. You need to cook it and stuff. And that activates a bunch of the nutrients that make it available for you. So that's why I'm really big into preparation of all foods. You know, in our history, 
In our history, a lot of our, our plants were actually prepared and soaked and fermented, and therefore it unlocked and even made some of the nutrients more available for our body. So am I a big raw food person? No, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not really. Actually, I'd, 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 I'd be more apt to eat a raw organ meat than I would a raw vegetable. Do you say Now, it doesn't make me carnivore. Do you say Because like I said, I love, I can honestly tell you, my favorite veggie to eat is actually steamed cauliflower. And take some good old ghee or organic butter or grass-fed butter or that melt that they make, which is a bunch of uh, uh, oils, and pour on top of it. So trust me, when people say, Doc, you do you know, talk a lot about organ meats, I just try to talk about them because if I can get you to do a little bit of them, life is going to be better. You're gonna miss, you're gonna get some nutrients from those organ meats that you will not get from anything else. And I at least get you to do it. And, and I know people say, Doc, but I, I can't even look at the, the meat. It just makes me want to gag. Well, then you need to supplement with it. Now, but the one thing that I want you guys to really understand about uh, why organ meats are so important, because I want you to picture this. No joke, just the most simple analogy. You know I love analogies. And I talk about the fire department and the carpenter. We talk about medical field being the, the fire department. God bless them. We hope they can put out some fires so we don't die. That's what they're, they're known for. But on the flip side, you need carpenter doctors and practitioners that know how to build houses. So, I mean, this is basic nutrition 101. If I were to show you every nutrition book that I have from college to postgraduate, to even stuff I just, I actually, no joke guys, I love textbooks because I like to see what they're teaching students in that on a regular basis. And so I buy them from some of the major colleges and, and the medical schools and I, I see what they're teaching out there. And you know what's so funny? If you grab any nutrition book, the most dense nutritional based foods always start with an organ meat and then everything else is way below it. It is. So that should give you some things that go in, I want cheap, cost-effective food because nobody eats organ meats anymore and so therefore they're very cost-effective so and that being said when you look at repair and build up if I eat a kidney I'm gonna have the building blocks to rebuild my kidneys now why is that important well if you've had high blood sugar for a long time and you have kidney problems I think it would be pretty good that your body regenerates from exactly what you eat in itself if you think about this I, I find it funny how we think that our body's always the same. Do you understand that your body, with the exception of your neurological system, regenerates fully within a year? Do you understand if you could keep yourself very strict for one year, you basically have a new body. It's about 18 months for the brain, and if you do have some permanent damage, yes, there's gonna be things that won't regenerate, but the majority of us can regenerate very highly on a regular basis. That's why eating a liver is so important for your liver because liver regenerates so quickly and so fast because it deals with so many things it's at a high rate of regeneration. So what am I gonna do? So if there's by far, I think the most important food, if you were to look at top five things Dr. Flynn said you should eat, number one is liver. I don't care what there is on the planet, that would be number one by far, see what I'm saying? Because that organ is especially for women. Now you're talking about men, but I'm talking women. Ladies, that liver is so important for you to do so many hormonal things, it's important. Uh, once again, my, my daughters, guess what? Um, even as they are, you know, I have two psychic girls, I have two that are not young, not old enough to cycle. And so happens this, but they still have liver. They still are going to show you, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to eat it today on, on, on the show. There's still, uh, products that I want them to do because when they do hit those cyclic years, then those livers are great. So I would tell you right now, top five foods I would tell you right now, liver is number one. Does anybody want to guess what number two is? Heart. And then kidney. And then believe it or not, I'd probably move into some cruciferous for me, cauliflower being number one and stuff. So that's just me based on the nutritional things that I think that the body needs that way. Now they're wrong. Allergies trump everything. So if you're allergic to cauliflower or allergic to cruciferous or guess what happens. So there's different things. So that's why people think I'm a carnivore person. I'm really not, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm actually uh, trying to do a wide variety of things that actually change uh, my hormone levels, but also for regenerative aspects. And that's the carpenter viewpoint. So if you look, so people say, well, Doc, what do you think is important about a digestive glandular? Right there, here's what happens. There's one trait that I will tell you right now that men and women share when it comes to stress. Um, their stomach is destroyed. That's where the, obviously the, the whole gut feeling thing comes from. And what we'll notice on this is we'll see a digestive glandular, and I want you to pop it up again there, Travis. If you look, there's a stomach in there. There's, once again, there's a liver in there. There's a pancreas in there. There's a duodenum in there. That's the first part of the small intestine. So therefore, when you do this, it supports the organs and has the constituents needed for healthy digestion and repair and regeneration. It's important. See, and when I talk about the stress aspect, do you understand that men and women deal with stress dramatically different physiologically? 
but digestively they deal with it very similar. Now, what do you mean? Um, when a guy's under stress, guess what happens? His stomach acid and everything will deplete because once again, when you're in fight or flight, your digestion slows down. That's for both men and women. Now it's interesting because when men are under stress, their testosterone actually goes up. And we're gonna talk about that when we have our man section here coming up here pretty soon. The idea is this. So you look at something like a digestive glider, what am I trying to do? People that come in that have major GI problems, major problems with their, with their stomach or small intestine, and guess what happens? The pancreas actually is used for massive digestive processes, not only insulin, but also digestive enzymes. But then if you look, once again, liver. So we have multiple factors that really contribute to digestion. It's important. Now, I think something that's really important right now today is the immune glandular. Why? Because if you look at what happens is you're looking at the spleen, one of the major organs that helps us you know, mature some of our white blood cells, helps us mature some of our immune cells. If you look at the liver itself and then thymus, there is another organ that helps us produce our T cells. See, the majority of our um, uh, immune system starts all stem cells from the bone marrow. Now, there are some other places, but it's majority all bone marrow and then it goes to different organs to mature. That's where the thymus and the spleen actually are so important. Now people say, doc, but in every one of your formulas you have liver. Yes, because it's actually so important not only to help build the immune system, but also to even rid some of the immune system that needs to get things out. Because if I have a good immune system, it's gonna take a lot of stuff to dump into the liver and I want it out of my system. So if you know, that's why I tell you, if there's a food that I'm gonna always stress, it's going to be liver. So the immune glandular is important. Next thing that happens is I want you to take a look it's just here what happens, ladies. The female glandular, yes, consistent repair and regeneration for those major organs, once again, liver and ovary. Ladies, the one thing is this, is you won't need such a great amount of nutrients to supply your ovaries for it to produce the amount of hormone it does every single month. It really does. You know, the one thing that's quite crazy is people do not realize, the ovary is, is the major hormone producing organ. It's not the only one. But once again, you know, when you actually have a cyclic young lady, you want these things to, you know, be in the body on a regular basis so there's good hormone production. That's why I love giving liver and ovary to a female because once again, it's a repair process. Now, um, I can honestly tell you, you know, I started taking glandular therapy when I was in college. Now, once again, from a different company, but the idea is this, is I wanted, I understood the nutritional value. When I was in college and I was going through all my nutritional classes and textbooks and everything, it kept on saying organ meats, organ meats, organ meats. So I was like, okay, you're saying, and, and again, I didn't want to eat organ meats back when I was in college. Now I do because once again, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, I don't know if I ever told you guys this story. Uh, I was a sophomore in college and um, we were learning about, you know, once again, certain fruits and vegetables and all of a sudden the avocado came up. Now over the last 10 years, I don't know if you know this, 10 years ago, not, not people ate a lot of guacamole. Uh, they really didn't. It actually in the last 10 years exploded, which is kind of good because of the understanding of healthy fats. But I was in college and I remember my grandma making guacamole and I always remember this uh, during Christmas. I looked at it and I always called it, uh, you know, uh, diaper baby poop. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it kind of looked at. You know what I'm saying? Because you ever see a baby, it's, it's kind of green and so that. So all of a sudden I was like, I didn't ever eat it. I didn't. My grandma's like, it's great. And my grandma also, also had organ meats and other things that way. Lo and behold, they knew about it even before things were huge. But that being said, all of a sudden, I was like, I was in my clouds class as a sophomore and, and professor's talking about avocados and I literally raised my hand. I'm like, you know, do you just eat them? He goes, no, you make guacamole. I'm like, oh, that's what they've been putting on my Taco Bell all the time. No joke, I gave up Taco Bell when I was in college, but when I realized that it was bad for me, okay? But that's the funny part is, is the fact that it's like, I was like, wow, that's when I learned what guacamole was. It's a kind of funny story. Uh, but that being said, you know, it's, um, it's important to have those healthy fats and other things that we need for those productions. So female glandular, quite important, let's say, but of course, we're gonna talk about this, obviously, the male glandular. We'll talk a little bit more about that today because you know why, if you look, Yes, there's a testicle in there, there's a prostate, there's a heart, there's a liver. Four very important organs for a male. It really is. I can honestly tell you that when you look at this, the male glandular, it's, it's essential. It really is. Um, now people say, Doc, but you know, you've eaten raw testicle and, and heart and liver. I've never had a prostate before from an animal. But once again, I have because it's in our male glandular because it's one thing that's important to our health. If you look at uh, BPH, b uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy, um, over the age of 50, roughly 80% of all men suffer from it. 
and I will believe it's more because your estrogen levels and your testosterone levels aren't right, and therefore it's there. But you know, something like this, I want to make sure that the prostate, the testicle, and the heart and liver are fantastic. So I get two of my favorite um, meats in just the glandular alone, and they're on. I'm going to show you a thing that we're going to have some. We're going to have some liverwurst today that also has heart and kidney in it that way, and then some people are going to take the pills. So these are very important for a person's health. Um, I think this one is essential for most people due to the fact, both men and women, that they do consume too much blood or blood sugar. And if you look at pancreas, kidney, liver, man, I'll tell you, the kidney has a wonderful thing. Now people say, doc, you know, you take the uh, blood sugar glandular. Also, I do because I love the kidney. The kidney actually has major factors, especially with allergies, that you, as you eat a kidney, you actually have a better time responding to certain allergies. That's why I do like it. There's certain ingredients in a kidney that help you deal with allergens and histamine production, it's quite, it's quite um, common. Now, one thing, that's, one thing that is huge that I use in practice a lot because of the amount of problems there was, was a thyroid glandular. Yes, that's an important thing. I can honestly tell you that this is probably, um, next to the male or female glandular, this is probably the most one I gave out on a regular basis because of the desiccated thyroid that's in there. It's a quite incredible. Your thyroid actually has a lot of metabolic activity. Next to your liver, it's probably the organ that actually takes most of the beating when it comes to healthcare conditions. Yes, heart disease is still number one killer. I don't doubt that. That's why heart's important to do. But thyroid actually has a lot of activity that goes on just like the liver. So I can honestly tell you that thyroid glandular was so important for that itself. And as you can see, obviously just liver itself. Um, the reason why I put that one just by itself is because if a person asks me about a multivitamin, there it is. This is what I would put in parentheses, the Wellness Way multivitamin. Because there is no multivitamin on the planet that could even compare to just actually raw liver. Could compare to a capsule form of desiccated liver. It's by far, it's dominant. If you look at all the vitamins, all the macronutrients, all the micronutrients, all the trace minerals, um, the thing that's gonna capture most of that is actually a liver glandular. If you think about this, this should alarm you. Most multivitamins um, are so synthetic and actually made out of petroleum-based products that I wouldn't encourage anybody to ever take a multivitamin, ever. And on top of it, then if you have a whole food multivitamin and it doesn't have an organ in there, it's really deficient in a lot of things. There is no plant source that's going to give you a massive amount of vitamins and minerals needed, but a liver does. That's why it's there. Now, one glandular that is used on a regular basis is actually the adrenal glandular because of so much stress involved in people's lives. So if you look at this, you can see that there's an adrenal in there and liver and on top of it, here's what happens. Um, I am a big fan of camu camu and lemons and other high vitamin C based foods. But you understand that a pancreas, uh, excuse me, I apologize, um, that an adrenal is loaded with vitamin C. It's actually probably the highest vitamin C based food that is not a plant source um, because it happens camu camu and lemons and other high vitamin C based foods, um, rose hips and everything, fantastic. But I would tell you right now, I would choose the adrenal glandular over not only the fact is it help with the adrenal regeneration, which is very key with the most stress that day, but it has copious amounts of vitamin C that is so available for our adrenals to use. That's why this was given out so much in practice itself. Now, huh, that being said, that's why instead of, you know, having people eat organ meats on a regular basis, we try to get them a supplement with them because what it really does is gets them on a habitual basis to giving the carpenter viewpoint of building blocks for each organ when actually they're under stress and regeneration because we want you to regenerate with the greatest products on the plant. And that's why having forms of organ meats are so vital to your health and life. All right. That being said, what, what time do you have? 8.30, perfect. I said the first part is going to take me about half an hour. It's 8.30 exactly. It just changed. What we're going to do, we're going to, it's going to take us probably about 30 seconds to a minute. But what we're going to do, we're going to set our studio up really quickly. And uh, like I said, we have an amazing team. We're going to step in and then we're going to come back. So just watch this uh, uh, screen for a second. We'll be right back in about 30 seconds to a minute. So see you soon.
All right, we are back with our men's round table. Last time we had Travis Frisk, uh, when we did the interview about your testosterone and everything like that. And then to my left, uh, which once again, we started this thing a long time ago. A long time ago. Uh, yes, Ross, show. I DPF, forgot about that. Yes, I am. So we got Rask, Alan Skorzewski here. And then uh, uh, obviously Brandon Flynn over to my right. Uh, now, yes, he's my nephew, more like my son, but also, you know, he was the one that came up with the idea of a media team and even putting it on there because before that, it's been almost eight years. Um, I was like, yeah. nah, I don't want to do any media stuff. It's like, I got, I got practice to worry about and those clinical things. So welcome, guys. We got Thank lots you. to cover. Thanks for having me. But before we start, it's kind of funny. Um, the the team is like, hey, listen, Doc, let's uh, let's get the, the guys to you know have some you can see on thing. We got some liverwurst in here. Well, it's actually it's kind of cool. So we got two pills basically of uh, of the male glandular, and we got liverwurst. So what happens is this: we have Travis because Travis and I ate liver already this morning. You get the pills. Two? Oh, two of them. You get two I already of them, took man. four this morning. Yeah, I know. One, Ross, in, the, you get one there. in the mouth and no, no, Ross, you get the meat. <laughs> oh, I'm just. Yeah, you're, you're doing the meat. I thought you said I was taking the pill. That's right. And then you get the pills, pills. and I get the meat again. So, That's not fair. So what's in here is actually liver, <laughs> heart, and kidney. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. You, you go. Know that? There we go. You know Sam? Easy. Simple, feet. easy. Now go. Meets horseradish. It does. Oh, oh, horseradish would be fantastic with that. Oh, uh, even a mustard. But really what happens is no joke. What they took of the two pills and we took as a slice of just a couple ounces of, of liverwurst that way, um, it's about equivalent. It really is. So um, that's why a lot of people take the pill form instead of eating it that way. <laughs> Travis and I were eating liverwurst this morning and everything had to lick the blade. <laughs> <laughs> I'll lick my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It tastes good. Now, it's funny. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with that, too. It's like, you know, it's kind of hilarious because some people would be like, oh, that's gross. And some of that women be like, it's gross. No. That's called being a guy. Yeah. We just do. Man. We just do some stuff that you won't understand. What are you you know what saying? That was the, that was, that's the old Mitch. They're the there. Ones. You want to feel them? That, but that, that's a Mitch trait. No. That's the Dr. Mitch trait. You got to give the old, no, the old the, slap. You know what I'm saying? So, Speaking of licking the plate, I think it's a guy thing. My son's 11, and he licks hot sauce off the plate. Oh. I mean, he, he, he doesn't leave anything. To yeah. Waste. Yeah. Yeah, it's really funny. It's like, uh, and, and you don't see young ladies do that and that's okay you said that's okay we like that you know sam i've seen my daughter do that on uh -huh. many occasions but it's normally when there's something sweet on the plate yeah that's true there you go that's true it's a good mm -hmm. point yeah so I'm, i never see my daughters lick the plate and stuff so. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so anyway so what we want to do today is we want to cover actually i literally have a uh tablet in front of me because there's so many people that have been asking questions and especially travis since we met we talked about testosterone and everything and I'm going to start with a little sports analogy just because I think it's going to set the tone for it. And then we're going, to, we're going to give some opinions. Now, remember, if you're highly offended by just a different idea, especially if you're a woman, I'm just bringing it up because we're going to talk about some manly stuff, and uh, then you may want to tune out, okay? Now, once again, because we're just going to give you a perspective of us. And then if you like it, great. If you don't, great. You know, it's just a different perspective. But I think what happens is culturally when I travel all over the U.S., I'll speak on men and women topics in a hormone connection seminar. And men and women, especially men, will come quietly and they'll be like, Doc, thanks for saying it because I just can't say it. And I think it's because culture has been suppressed so much. And I want to start with a sports analogy because I think the only mental acceptable aspect of man is actually in sports today. Now, let me explain why. You know, I use the example because obviously we live in Green Bay. I remember when Aaron Rodgers got, got on microphone, but he was just doing it and he scored a touchdown in the end zone. He did the discount double check, you know, belt. And he's like, he's like, Chicago, I own you. Now, do you understand? Testosterone itself makes a man very confident, makes him very laser focused, yeah. makes him very competitive, makes him want to destroy his competition. And, and if you know the Packer fans when that happened, everybody was like, woo, they're just jacked up. And the guys were like, and all the guys were like, yeah. And then of course, you know, being competition, the Chicago Bears are like, you know, this, this, this. And I can honestly tell you, I, I heard women be like, you know, no, not all of them, but a lot of them are like, you know, he can be more humble. He can be more of this, yeah. he can this. Um, ladies, I mean, this is here, we're gonna get into it. Be quiet. <laughs> or he's too arrogant. Yeah, yeah. be quiet. Hockey. He's not you. Do you understand? Know because you ask a guy, they're like, yeah. And see, it's acceptable in sports. It really is. Until the sports become at younger men age. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then they've actually said, well, you can't have any competition. You can't be confident. You can't be this. So we're going to keep no score. 
and we want everybody to fit that there's no winner and losers. Participation there's trophies. There's always winner and losers. I'm sorry, and here's what happens. I mean this sincerely. Okay, now the wellness way is unique, so we don't really have a competitor. We're way ahead of everybody that way. But if there was a competitor, and they were male or female, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna do everything to destroy you. <laughs> I'm gonna discount, double check, and own your ass. Fight him in the parking lot. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's just what happens. That's what a guy is like. We're competitive, we're confident, and it doesn't matter if you're male or female. Do you know what I'm saying? If you are a competitor, guess what happens? You you're win. gonna be like, and that's why I kind of laugh. I was a wrestler in school, okay? Now, mm. I didn't have to wrestle a girl, ever. But if I would've gotten that mat and wrestled her, I would've done everything to destroy her. <laughs> and why would I destroy her figuratively yeah. as competition wise, yep. beat her yep. and be the winner and put my hand up and her walk away? I did you the same him? thing. That's why I'm actually in the female swimming right now. Oh, <laughs> That's right. You do look like a female yeah. swimmer. Good for you, Travis. <laughs> you guys as a woman today? Sure. <laughs> Proud of you. <laughs> yeah. But think about this way right? it's a competitive nature of testosterone. And, and it's like, and if you talk about sports and professional sports, the guys who get paid the most are the most brutal. Mm -hmm. They are. That's why I love it when I see, I, 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 we got to get back to, you know, the NFL. They can't raise their hand. They can't celebrate. You know, it's like, really? A guy's like confident. He did it. Or the smack talk on the yep. field. Oh, I love it. Out for taunting. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's never been one of these things where they just have to hold their tongue. Right. You know, it's part of the aggression. It's part of the sport. It's part of intimidation. It's getting into the mind of yes. the player so that you can dominate. Yes. The only, I'll be, a, I'll be the devil's advocate here is it's good to be humble because sometimes you run across a buzzsaw like Michael Jordan. You, if you looked at him wrong, he used that as motivation to, yeah. to get oh, you back. Yeah. So I love the destroy. You're on the yep. field, own them. But careful, because that they'll, they'll put that on the calendar next time they play you. So yep. there, there's kind of that balance you got to keep. You better be ready. Yeah, well, absolutely. on top of it, you better back up what you can say. Yep. Yeah, Do you exactly. Sand? Absolutely. And see, so the idea is this. So Michael Jordan is kind of funny. This happened the other day. We were on the, we were on the golf course. And uh, um, you and, Michael Jordan. And, hey, this is this is, <laughs> this is what happens. This is not a joke. This happens all the time. Is the fact that it's like you know when you go out in golf, like to play, but you know golf is a competitive sport against yourself. So me and Faith and Brandon are out uh, golfing, and and they and they're like you know and, and I do quite well. So Brandon and Faith are like we'll play against you, we'll play for coffee and everything. So we're like okay, cool, and I'm just playing, and all of a sudden we get to like three holes left. Yeah, I think and we're up too. They're up by one stroke and so yep. that. Well, then they start yeah. cocking off and some of that, and I'm like. Now, the competitive uh, nature to came on, and it's like, yeah, they start calling me grandpa and everything like that and everything, and I'm like, and it's uh -oh. like, boom, what happened? You just literally shut up, hit your ball, you hit it like T80, then you got in your car, you didn't even let us hit, you just started driving. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, I looked at Faith Faith, like, yeah, we're done. Yeah, <laughs> see, I think, no, it's like, okay, listen, we're out here for fun, cool, we can be a man, uh -oh. chill out, relax that way, but you come, you actually trigger my mental aspect, and I get laser focused, and I get jacked up, and I destroy them by four strokes. Oh, I get, the last three holes. I get jacked up up when I golf and I hit this divot that's like three feet down. <laughs> right. it's that sod. Yeah, you go up to crush the ball and you completely whiff and miss it. And yep. But that sod uh, though went like 50 yards. Dude, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. So so let's kind of go on this. So, so it's interesting how it's almost like testosterone, confident, laser focused, aggressive, you know, and that's what I said. When they triggered me, my testosterone, no joke, just from that mental thing, went up. I'm like, all right, now listen, it, it, all right, it's my daughter and my nephew. Now, once again, so my aspect of you know where destroy them is, all right, I, you want to see how good I am? You know what I'm saying? And then I just, because, you know, before I was out there, okay, just kind of chill and relax with them and spend time with my people I love and stuff of that. And we're having fun, but then also, like, they start talking smack. We did that yeah. with Mitch and Sam, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. And then we, we were like, oh, we're that last another hour? four holes, too, I think. Yep. I know that was maybe towards the middle, but then we're like, oh, do you need an oxygen tank? And then we said, yeah. like, and then all of a sudden beat us by like eight strokes again yeah well yeah it's like it's like it's kind of like it just turns out and but see that's the cool now think about that ladies in life don't mistake my kindness you for say, weakness oh say that again say don't that again don't mistake my kindness for weakness mm -hmm. that's a great one that's a great one ross don't it don't uh wait say it one more time don't mistake my kindness for weakness and yeah. i think that you know when we're talking about this the competitive side of things especially when you turn the switch on right you know, we're talking about, you know, the female counterparts of the male, and we're talking about confidence, mm -hmm. humility, all of these other things. There are certain attributes and components that we want to see brought to the table, but yet, when they start saying, I want confidence, yep. I want more humility. I mean, it's, it's, but don't mistake my kindness for weakness. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always said, now remember, ladies, I come up with the help of a female perspective on this. <laughs> I used to always say, in this kind of, kind of, kind of thing, because I said, you know, remember, now remember, if there's young kids watching, please get them away. Because I always, always say, 
ladies, they want to sleep with the bad boy, but they want to marry the good guy. So we're going to say a little different, a little more political terms. They want steel and they want silk. Ooh, there you go. Do you oh. understand? They want a man to be strong as steel, but they also want to be smooth as silk. And if you're a husband and you're a good man, you will be both. See, because you know something? If you're all silk, she's going to get bored. If you're all steel, she's going to get angry. Do you yeah. understand? So you need to be steel and silk at the same like time. That. And there's sometimes you're strong, there's sometimes you're smooth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's where it comes down to the fact that it's like, and drunk. And when guys get together, we just try to show how much steel we have. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We, we end up instead of looking like silk, we're more like burlap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, because, you know, we, we want to be strong. And you get around other testosterone-based guys. Yeah. Now, you know, we can insult each other. We can yes. be con we can be with each other. We can cock off to each other. Up. We do. It's like, it, yeah, it, Ch Travis, show him the chest. Do Come on, just, show him yeah. the chest. Oh, there you go. See? <laughs> Travis pulls up the chest and starts peacocking a little bit. It's you know, the so male it's like, glandular. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's what I'm trying to go on. The fact this is like, Durham, so ladies, here's one thing. When we're trying to be steel, you may not understand it. Yeah. That's or one like thing. Or, or even like it. And then I wrote something myself, okay? I was actually thinking about some things about this. And you know what's really funny? I already said, listen, I don't need a woman, uh, a woman's words to keep me going. I need them not to slow me down. Do you say him? Or tear you down. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what happens is this, is like going, you know, I said, so let me read it in phrase because I pause for a second. I don't need a woman's words to keep me going. I need them not to slow me down. Because nature, we get laser focused and yep. we're barely in forward. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and once again, and because of the nature of hormones, it'll be different. You know, the, uh, you know it's kind of funny. Let me explain this because even a very driven woman, because then women get, you know, confused about this. They'll say, well, you're saying we're not driven. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is this. Is the guy is so laser focused, mm -hmm. he can forget about everything. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna Focus show you what some stress. on that one thing and do whatever it takes to get that Yes, thing. Mm -hmm. and by nature, which makes women great on this aspect, so we'll talk about the greatness of a woman here, is their estrogens make them more connected to everything so their laser focus can only happen for a very short time and then they still don't forget about everything else. Multitasking. When, when, when I leave the house, I forget that I even have kids or married. <laughs> yeah, anyway, for sure. Do you understand? <laughs> I'm working. That's, now remember, yeah. I'm gonna speak more like a guy, but the idea is this, it's like you leave the house, it's like you forget that you even mm. have that that way because once again, you're gonna, we're gonna, we're a little bit more laser focused and They're that's there, okay. But you need now to work. When, yes. I'm, yeah, when, I'm provide, laser focused on, yeah, when I'm laser focused on something, uh, what I'm really happy about with my wife is she refines it. Mm -hmm. she, she speaks into it, tweaks it, you know, makes sure that I still achieve my goal and supports me, but instead of, uh, what was the word, the quote again? I want to feed into that quote. Oh, here we go. I do not need a woman's words to keep me going. I need them not to slow me down. Yeah, she, uh, she doesn't speak me to keep me or speak into it to keep me going. I already have that drive. She yep. refines it and makes it better, and makes sure that I'm dotting all my I's, crossing all my T's. And, that, and that's a good balance of a husband and a wife right there. Well, and there's, the, there's a great country song. I kid you not, I love this song. It's hilarious. I don't even listen to country that much. It's going uh, to a T. See, what happens is, is they should know you to a T. But it's really yeah. sad, our culture today is really downplaying what men really are. And the sad part is this, is then they're, then they're disappointed in guys today. I think, you know, you say know them to a T. Yep. Again, speaking from a male perspective here, and I think in today's society, you know, talking about the two different sexes here is that, <clears throat> sure, we're supposed to know the woman to a T. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's also a reciprocating factor to that as well. Yes, there know is. the Us. man to a T, but also respect it. And speaking to the words, we don't want them, they don't always have to speak into it, but when they do, it should be complimentary. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. You want to drive a man's testosterone down, speak down to him. Absolutely. It's one of my biggest don'ts. Don't yep. talk yeah. down to yeah, me. Don't belittle me. Right. Don't assume the worst of me yep. and think that you have the answer or the right approach or all these other aspects to it. Now, again, complimentary, love it, but yep. when it starts to become condescending or talking down, yep. That's maybe back that's up. why my testosterone is so high. Sarah's always talking into it. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's uh, super refining. There you go. Like people, yeah. people, people actually think that a guy is driven sexually. That's actually not true. A guy is actually when when they're supported and the the connection. the connection is there and a, and a woman speaks you know to them instead of that not at them. What it does. That woman will yeah. grab his mind, which, which then, guess what happens? Testosterone still starts with a, with a hormone called LH in the brain. And you start speaking down, and that guy starts getting, mm -hmm. you know, uh, speaking of those things, his LH drops, his testosterone drops, and I'm telling you right now. And his confidence. Confidence drops. You know what I'm saying? It really does. And so, therefore, then, 
when that happens. And, and remember, and the sad part is this, is because our culture is now saying, this way a man's gotta be, sorry, churches, you're horrible at this. You're wussified like crazy and stuff of like that. And it happens is they're speaking down to guys because they're always talking about, and once again, we're gonna, we're gonna tackle this because you're talking to a person that was a pastor for 20 years, youth pastor there for a long time, you know, meek versus weak. The concept of a, this, got this idea that men, meekness is actually this wimpy, submissive kind of person that way, it doesn't happen. Um, I will quote you know, Jordan Peterson on this because um, it's probably one of the greatest explanations I ever heard when it came to a man. He's like, you know, um, by nature, men are downplayed what they're supposed to do, but you know how they are. But really by nature, a man's a monster. Mm -hmm. It's just that he's trained to be controlled. Do you know what I'm saying? So be a monster, but be a controlled monster. Yeah. That's and, one of my favorite people in the Bible is Joshua. There you go. He slaughtered so many, so many people, just wiped them out. Yep. You know, and, and uh, but obviously that you know, you know, celebrate that right now. But he they had to do a lot of tough things, a lot of strong things to accomplish what needed to be accomplished. Oh, look at David in the Bible. Oh yeah. Butt kicker. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, if you look at this way, so here's what happens this, this for example, um, but David in the Bible was actually a horrible dad. So he needed to be steel, but he also needed to be <laughs> yes. silk. He was, he was yeah. a horrible dad. I mean, that's, you know, we all know the Bible quite well, but I did, but that's why, well, that's why I kind of like, that's why I actually said I had, I had a breakfast with a pastor the other day. And I said, can you do me a favor? I said, most churches are decorated for women uh, and they have the you know, like pictures, it really is. They have pictures of a uh, Jesus with a lamb on his, uh, his thing and then a robe. I'm like, he's not going to a day spa or, or a farm, okay? Can you put a picture up of Jesus flipping a table or grabbing a whip? Then a guy walk in and go, yeah, right. yeah. Right. You see him? <laughs> it's like, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, once again, there's time there's needs steel and there's time needs silk. silk. Yeah. But everything is so silky and ch telling you that, hey, you know, and, 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 and no joke. And I'm sorry, women, correct us if you're wrong. We all agree upon this. You are attracted to the strong male. You know what I'm saying? And then if they're silk on top of it because they know you and understand a woman and what I understand a woman needs, which is the silk part of it that way, mm -hmm. guess what happens? It's the best. And that's why, that's why women have, they say, well, Doc, I have a nice guy. I'm like, okay, so you're bored. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're bored. Mm -hmm. You're bored out of your mind. And they're, like, and they're like, oh, no, I love my husband. Cool, but you're still bored. Right. <laughs> and a lot of this comes down to conversation. Like, I'm new in my marriage, two years mm -hmm. still. But I've noticed just from watching you guys and, and having many conversations that if I don't tell Rebecca, like, this is a steal moment. I need to be this way. Yep. I'm going to be emotionless. I'm sorry, but, like, I don't lead this family. Mm -hmm. I may not be in the, I may not make the, the happiest decision for us, but it's got to be the decision, the hard one. And that means if I have to work a little bit longer, if I need to provide or yep. whatever, it all comes down to conversation, though. So she knows yeah. at the end of the day that, like, oh, you know, is this a, a steal moment? Is a good, that's a good way to put it. It's like a steal moment right now. I would run something that I've been thinking about, okay? Correct me if I'm wrong on this, but we're going to go after a culture thing right now, okay? Because he's talked about, you know, providing. Do you know it's ingrained? Even since I was little, it's ingrained that I need, you know, and I said, not ingrained like my dad or my mom were saying this way. It's almost like it's, it's ingrained as it's from God. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And I said, you can say universe, nature. I don't care. I'm a God person. That's all I say, God. But here, follow me on this, this thing, and you guys give me your opinion on this. When a man gets money, he thinks how he can provide for a woman. When a woman gets money, they think how they do not need a man. I think that, that's Ooh. all about perspective. That's brutal, isn't it? Ooh, it is brutal. <laughs> I think it depends on the woman. It hurts my heart a little bit. Yeah, it does, yeah, but it does. Culturally, culturally, think about how it happens. Well, yeah, I mean, our culture today, I mean, they're trying to empower women and... Like they don't... Uh, they, they empower they don't women like they don't need a man. The man anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But then, but it happens this, but that's the we need each other. of America. Yeah, we need each other. We do. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing. It's like... It's a balance. I'm, that's yeah. The way God created it. Well, it's yeah. kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, steel and silk. It's kind of like man and woman, but then they can share some traits that are there that guess what happens, that they're important, you know? And so when I sit there and go, I watch it, cause I, I, you know, obviously I watch a lot of YouTube stuff that way. And I watch these people talk about, you know, you know, every time that they're talking about empowering women, they're not talking about empowering them to be a good, you know, how provider. Say? Well, that's yeah. just a good companion. Oh yeah. They're providing yeah. to be independent without a companion. Yeah. I'm like going, right. really? Yet when men actually, cause you know something is this, do you understand this? You could be a broke female at 40 and guess what happens? Someone still wants to date you. Yep. You're a broke man at 40. You're in trouble. So you're I just, you're in yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Like, you're like, and women are like, you're broke if at you're 40. you're broke at 40, well, you did something married, wrong then. with your life. <laughs> you, you made some bad life decisions. If you're broke at 40, don't have a car, you're not, you don't have your yeah, own house. They, they downgrade a guy like absolutely. that. Absolutely. That happens that you're a 40-year-old woman and it's like going, 
No, you still have an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, we're they, talking about this. They pit us against each other. It's like the, yeah. that's what they're doing. They it don't should, realize it should be it. coming together. Exactly. Yeah. You saying? Well, yeah. there has to be. I mean, logic tells you, common sense tells you. I mean, with the divorce rates and everything, the way they're they're pushing, you know, the women to be versus how they're trying to regress the men. It's it's the, the proof's in the pudding. You know, right. we're doing something wrong as a society, and we got to change it. The worst part, I don't even think they realize it though. Either. Well, sometimes when they're having those conversations, they don't even realize that they're 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 demasculating us and they're putting us into this like, oh, you don't need to. And then now guys want to stay home, and now it's a, it's almost like a reverse. And now there's guys that mm -hmm. it's just like I don't know, uh, you know, you don't know what to think. When I when I teach that at my hormone seminar, talk about men being confident, yep. laser focused, run after their dreams, and 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 everything about that way. And it's really funny because a man, if they act like that in the business world, or they act like that in public. That's, that's spoken down to mm -hmm. because of the culture of today. Yet, if a man's 40 years old and broke, guess what happens? Ridicule. They ridicule yep, things yep. like that. It's like, you can't have it both ways. You mm -hmm. can't. No. And so what happens is this. Like I said, you better be speaking life into those young boys about go get your dreams. And guess what happens? And I'm, and I'm going to tell, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because I have an amazing, you know, strong, good man dating my oldest daughter. And guess what happens? I'm going to teach him, you know, say, guess what happens? Some person in competitive world, male or female, gets in your way, go through them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, you know, what happens to this? It's like, and they're on. My daughter's following my footsteps, Faith following my footsteps, where she's actually going to be a doc and she's going to, but you know what happens to this? Devin's going to have a different outlook on that compared to her because she's oh, a woman. Sure. And if I try to make her me, I have more chance of, of Devin replicating what I'm doing than my daughter. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not, because Faith is, is, is amazing. She's a, she's a machine. Because what happens to this? Her, she's still a woman, so her focus is going to be a little bit different. Now, now if they can come together, guess what happens? It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah, Absolutely. seriously. Hi, Powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that I think it's important. It's really simple. There's there's three types of people in this world. Are men? There's sheep, there's wolves, and there's sheep dogs. And I think what we are we're trying to empower men to be here is be sheep dogs mm -hmm. because this world's trying to teach you to be a sheep. Yep. You know, and if you if you push that too hard, they're going to become wolves. You know, and or the, the sheepdog will become wolves. But we have it's our job to protect. Yep. You know, and and that kind of goes towards one of your notes. I don't know if we talked about it yet. Which one? Uh, meek versus weak. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, there's a difference. You know, it, uh, and right now we have a lot of wolves and we have a lot of sheep, and we don't have a lot of sheepdogs. And I think that's another reason why we're imbalanced. Well, in the, in, there's an old saying the word to the meek and the weak. What happens this, and this is where um, the just say people have been teaching it wrong when they talk about meek. They think, okay, that you're just a pushover and you're not strong. Mm -hmm. And Submissive, those are people that are going to ha have it. That's yeah. not true. Actually, the funny part is this, and, and I don't know who said it, but it's a wonderful quote. It says, I'd rather be a warrior in the garden oh, yeah. than a gardener in a war. Mm -hmm. And so it happens this, and we are, we are putting a bunch of gardeners out there for men in our culture today. Yep. And that's actually biologically incorrect. It is. You're know saying, and how I feel sorry for, you know who I feel sorry for? It's actually not even the men, because they can, in a second, turn it on. It's the young ladies that have to, that have to mm -hmm. be date or Navigating even want to marry, get, ma marry yeah. these men that, for example, are spoken down to, low testosterone, not driven, stuff of like that. And I'm, yeah. and I'm sorry, it's like, because you know what's it? Picture that guy that they want to teach him like in their teens and 20s mm -hmm. and 30s. If they're, if they're a weak, broke man at 40 years old, they're like, well, what a loser. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I like, wonder why the suicidal rate is so high. It's still, high. Yes. still the highest in men. Yes. It's still the highest in men. Once again, then, like, you know, as a, as a father now, and I'm seeing you guys, I have to teach my little brother. I actually took him for lunch yeah. this week, and I had to be like, okay, I'm going to teach you things on how to be a man. And you know what? I'm learning, too. So this is going to be a journey for both of us. But some of the things I'm telling him, he's never, he's never heard. No one's ever taught him these things. So part of it is, like, as a, as a, as a leader, as a man, we yeah. have to teach these other guys, and a lot of people just aren't doing that. And that's the sad part because I, I have to be the one that steps up for my little brother to say, hey, like, you have to respect people. You, you know what I mean? There's certain times when you talk and certain times when you listen. And right now, you know, like, you've been, you've been disrespecting mom, so now you got to be a man. you got to realize, like, yeah. don't do these things, you know? So You know, I think it's important as, as a man, we need to understand 1 Corinthians 13 and what love actually is. And if we can treat people that way, I think a lot of the issues we have go away. However, when they don't, you have to have those boundaries set. Uh, there are certain things I will put up with, put up with and tolerate, but at some a certain at some point, excuse me, you're, you're pushing my buttons. Well, you know, and, you know, and it's mm -hmm. 
people don't realize this. So Travis now he works here corporately that way, but Travis also um, even started out just as my security. So it happens this. So you'll see Travis run around hugging everybody all day long. Incredible. Shares a lot of love that way. But yeah, you, he's you got the sniper you show the full screen. You. That's right. But I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. His tackle training and knives and guns. We have our guns here and stuff like that, and security and stuff like that. Sorry, when it's steel time, I don't want to come up against Travis. Nope. You know, nope. Sam. And it's like, mm -hmm. and because, and that's the thing, and that's the weird fact of going. Listen. That's the part that, and, and see, and all men, it's, it's kind of cool. We got eight men in the studio today. <laughs> it's just all men today. That, yeah. is, that, is, that's rare. that is a rarity it's a rarity. at the wellness It smells night. like man in here, that's too. Right. It's, it's a locker room right now. <laughs> it's all burping and farting and scratching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, uh, but that, you see, the funny thing is, I'm talking about guys. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and it's so sad because it's always, you know, saying this. I mean, some Jimmy and Brandon said this. Sorry, women, you're not supposed to raise your boys. You're not. Right. You're not. There's things that they can understand because actually, if it's raised by a good man, he will teach that boy how to treat a woman. Yes. Yeah. You think I'm not yelling at Devin in a good way? No, I'm not yelling. It should be modeled. It not only should be spoken in word, but it mm -hmm. also should be shown and yep. seen and visible. Yep. Mm -hmm. And right. whether you have this in your life, you know, due to whatever environment that raised you, you should still be at least on path to break potentially some of those. What would they call it? like generational curses? Is yeah. one of the, you know break you know just because you didn't have it doesn't mean that you can't learn it and sure. model it and live it and teach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say you're let's say you're a, a teenage boy that has, has a mom that's single. Well, great. Go find a good man to learn from. Yes. You know, Sam and actually just sit down and ask. Do you understand that most good people, if someone came to us and said, "Hey, can I sit down and ask you a bunch of questions?" We're open to say, heck yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, even that right there for a man to think that he is lacking in an area to even go out and ask for help, yep. to, in, in today's, that's a sign of weakness and that has been ingrained inside oh. of them. So the fact that I would go to another man and look for help and guidance, mentoring, coaching, yep. so that I can get some great insight to become a better man, to be able to be a better father, a better yep. husband, we don't ask because that is seen as weakness because we should already know. Right. You know, one of the one of the biggest things, the difference between a wolf and a sheepdog, the difference between being a good man and a horrible man is one of the fruits of the spirit, and that's yep. self-control. Yep. The self-control is why I can be a good protector for Patrick or whatever he yep. needs me to be at that day. You know, it's the, if I'm some Rambo guy, I'm gonna be in jail. Yep. And I am no good to anybody. So self-control is lacking and you know what? You could be tough and have self-control and yep. still be a tough guy. But yep. I think you say self-control, it comes out self-awareness. Right. Ah, self-awareness yeah. because a, there's a difference. Self-control self yeah, self it means like you have an awareness that you know what needs to be controlled so you can yep. practice the pause. Yep. But you, can, you don't just automatically default into self-control. Yep. Right. You have to have self-awareness, which is okay. That means one of the big things that you've always talked about, mm -hmm. know thyself. That's right. And yep. just because you don't have it all figured out, which we as men think we put yep. on a front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you know thyself and you know the areas where you have deficiencies in growth, that's where the awareness is. Now you do something about it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. why. So let's talk about something that lowers men's testosterone. What happens is this, is, is when you know yourself and then people are consistently trying to tell you not to be yourself. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I'm sorry, yep. ladies, you don't understand us that <clears throat> way. You see, mm -hmm. and so for, that's why, that's why I get, I personally get very nervous about, you know, um, uh, women always telling guys how they should be. It's like, you don't even have the bio biology to understand what goes through our brain. Ladies, if you understood what went, for our went through our brain every single day, <laughs> you would be, yeah. Mortified. Jumping off a cliff. You'd be mortified. <laughs> you'd be like, you, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be laying next to that guy every single day. You know what I'm saying? And see all the guys sitting here laughing because you know it's true. The, the stuff that goes through our brains, being aggressive, being stuff like that, it's like, um, once again, self-aware. You say it, yep. and it's like, and that's self-control. Yes. Yep. And so therefore, once again, that's that's why I kind of I kind of laugh when when like, you should do this. I'm like going, you have no idea what goes through our brain. But when they, I'm I'm I, just speaking in generalities here. Mm -hmm. But when they say you should be this, mm -hmm. and then the guy potentially starts to be this. Mm. Sometimes the result that they're bringing to is not, not like yes. yep. And yep. it's like you got to be careful because sometimes you put this stuff in the mo because inherently the guy wants to win. That's it. That, he that's just like wants to yeah. win. He's, he's, he's so he starts to... winning and then all of a sudden. Uh -huh. We want to break necks and cast checks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> now, again, generalities. I'm not it's saying always. this is, again, across the board. Right, but yeah, but think of this way. <laughs> look at our, look at our studio guys and Doc Patrick. Like, they're all laughing. They're stuff. like, yeah. That's the point. But see, that's when Aaron Rodgers is like, I own you. Yeah. Every guy's like, yeah. You and don't it's like, own me. You, you, don't, you don't own, own me. me. Well, I can honestly tell you. Being, being, I will tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this. This is not a joke. I actually, when Aaron Rodgers did that, I remember being at church and listening to some of the women like, oh, arrogant. Oh, this like going, and I'm like going, shut up. Be you careful, said? yeah. Be careful be of careful. your perception of what you think is arrogance, because right. when you say you want the confidence, yes. and he goes out, and I can't, I'm not a Packers fan, so those of you, I'm here in Green Bay, because yeah. he goes out and he goes, bam! Yeah. That's <laughs> oh, that's arrogant. That's all you need. No. What do you want? Do you want confidence? Yes. Because I think it's highly misunderstood. Because, because you know what's really funny? They like it if it's, they like if it's against another guy, but if it's against them, it's like, oh, and yeah. you saying. Because once again, they don't have the confidence. We, they're not even biologically supposed to have the confidence that we do. You say, and yet some do. Yeah, but it's false. Sorry. Do you say, because I don't care how good looking you are. I don't care what state you are. Because I've done this now to hundreds of thousands of people in my hormone seminar. I'm like, ladies, do me a favor. Write down everything you say about yourself in one day, okay? And I don't care how good looking they are. I don't care how many guys want them. Their their write down of their negativity is dramatic. You mm -hmm. do it to a guy. A guy just tells you all the great things about themselves. Yeah. Well, so you say let's, let's be the devil's advocate here, just because people are probably going to be asking this at home, mm -hmm. I know. Isn't winning good enough by crushing them? Is you it know? what? Isn't winning good enough by, by crushing them? You know what I mean? Like, like Aaron just did in that, day, that game. I mean, at some point, we're, what's that balance? You know what I mean? Let's take that to the real life for a second. I don't know. It's football. He, I'm, he's, it's, a he's, good, he's, it's a good question. He's getting $40 million a year. I think him crushing yeah. has done pretty Keep good. Crushing, this bro. idea, Well, the idea to, for, to him to even, to, for him to even get to the point of doing this and say, I, I own you, do you understand the mental the and physical things that he had to do to go there? Right. Yeah. See, I would tell people this. I'm like, do you know what's really funny? The more responsibility some individual has, the more empathetic everybody should be for them. No, what I was um, saying is, I'm sorry, I, I should re refine my, my message. No, what I was just saying is, so that, that translate in football, but how does that translate into real life? Wh where, what's the balance for that? Well, here, but, yeah. I, but, think, oh, good. I think that when you look at something like, you know, Rogers, if I go back to that, right, for him to get to the point to even do whatever that thing is yep. called, it's not like he just the got balance. cocky on the spot. No. And owned, you know, said what he said in some flagrant, arrogant way. He had, because there's words, right, confidence, but he also had the consistency of winning. And discipline. And, and discipline, but he backed it up because it wasn't the first time. Time, that's right. Own the Bears. Well, it's, watch this. The consistent Cause, cause get factor. This. Now watch this. What's happening culturally? You know what happens is if a guy gets up, and I'm sorry, I'll say this. I've, I've, you know, hit some success in life in the in the, the perception of that way with business and stuff of like that. And if I talk about it, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, a man's being arrogant. arrogant. This is this. this. Yeah. But if a woman would do the exact same thing, good for you. Yeah, you'd be like, you go, girl. You don't need a man. You need all stuff of this. I'm going. Well, actually, what's the, the different culture? Because actually, inside us, we're more driven that way. Mm -hmm. You say it, it doesn't mean, like I said, it doesn't downplay. And on top of it, if that woman's a competitor, a guy, if he's being honest, mm -hmm. he, he wants he wants to dominate whoever's his comp competition that way. Yes. And that's why that's why it's like when 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 like I said, I know you know I, I'm not even a Packer fan, but it's kind of funny, and I live in Green Bay. <laughs> but, I'm not even, yes. but no, but I mean, oh, I'm not even, you're an I'm, Aaron I'm, fan though. After I'm COVID. a big Aaron yeah, Rodgers yeah, fan. Yeah, so. yeah, well, no, no, no. Here's happens. Let me go back to this point because I wanted I wanted to run on this, and Travis is talking talk about this. Do you know something? This, watch this. If if a person has more response being in life, you have to be empathetic. Do you know why? Because watch this. Um, if I'm never going to criticize Aaron Rodgers because I don't have his talent, yep, yep. I didn't, you know, you're not there. I'm not there. Yep. So I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there going, man, I'm going to have some empathy because I'm putting myself in his shoes his and shoes, going, yeah. man, what did that guy do to get there? You know, yeah. Sam. Mm -hmm. And the more responsibly you have up in the chain, even in the business, even this, you know, it's like it's, it's funny. If you have, no, let me say this, you know, very respectfully. If you walk into a big company and it's your first day there, and you're critical of the CEO, it's like, dude. You don't even have the responsibility what that guy has to go through. You better be empathetic because that guy leading you has had to do certain things to get that level. Do you know what I'm saying? And you should be more inquisitive that way. And that's one thing where if, if, if the employee, if you want to one day be a CEO, he should go to him and say, okay, listen, you know, how did you get there? What has it done that way? Mm -hmm. And see, that, that's why when it comes down, remember, I, I bring that up for this purpose. As men, guess what happens? We have a certain responsibility. Yep. We do. And... They may not see the, somebody, even your spouse, they might not see the path 
that you want to be, but there should be some empathy of what we go through in order to understand that way and go, maybe I should put myself in that guy's shoes and wonder what it takes to take a company from $500 to worldwide. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Maybe it should be an idea of some empathy and some understanding, yeah. once again, on both sides, both men and female that way, going, you know, the more responsibility a person has, the more empathetic anybody should be to them because, you know what something is this? I mean, sincerely, a manager would have more responsibility than um, just a day-to-day -day worker. Now, that's not, now I know it's gonna happen. See, here we go with the, with the, with the aspect of strong and weak. It's not saying each, everybody has their role, yep. but mm -hmm. more responsibility, actually, it takes a little bit more laser focus for that. Yeah, right. And you, what you told me the other day, we were driving and you were like, the number one cause of divorce right now is money. And that's what, mm -hmm. honestly, we're talking about. The root of all of what we're talking about is like money. Like, women can provide their money. When I walk in the door and I see Rebecca and Cora comfortable, yep. they can, we can do things that we want to do. Yep. That makes, that drives me. That's confidence. That mm -hmm. makes me want to wake up, Never go there every daughter. day. Yes. Sorry, that's right. Yeah. Everybody. Um, yep. Not some random people. Um, <laughs> but back in, it's, his third, yeah. it's his third life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, no, but like that. That at the end of the day, that that's what drives me. Is like it's not money. It's that I have to get the money to provide for my family because I don't want them. I don't honestly want to be in a bad car that's going to break down. I don't want to be in a house that it has leaks and I don't want to have to go through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and for me, that just works harder every single day. And mm -hmm. and the more options that I get with that come from fruits of my labor, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So. So now me, you know, at 47, divorced, you know, when I 37. sit- 37. Thank you very much. I'm 37, <laughs> yeah. thank you, I appreciate that. You want to hug later? Absolutely. Why wait? Why wait? Oh, do a little pat on the backside. Is that for me, you've got that drive, right? See, I don't, now it's important for me to provide. Yeah. Absolutely, I want to be able to meet those needs, yep. but I'm more prone to want to meet the needs of potentially some okay. counterpart someday through the love, through the affection, to be sure. the man that is able to awaken the possibilities for the woman to be what she wants to be, but I also want to bride. It's not like this all-encompassing, oh, for me to be the, pa sure. the old kind of concept of the patriarchal yep. model of what the man's role is, mm -hmm. because it's not just to provide. Well, it comes like this. It's not just to, you so, know. So I'm sitting next to a little bit of a steel and silk. You gotta be both. Yes. You have to be both. Yeah. Because if you're if you're all steel, what's gonna happen is this. I get in trouble. It's it's gonna well it happens this. It's gonna they're gonna miss that 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 connection and things like that. Because remember, guys thrive on connection yes. and stuff of like that. So what happens is this, they're gonna be like it's this, and then the woman will talk more of the silky part. Then mm -hmm. if you're all silk, they're gonna want more of a of a steel part. I'll that give way. you some of my steel. Which one am I? <laughs> which one am I, Patrick? But, what's that? Which one am I? You're both. We're both. But I think it really comes down I'm to both. then is yep. effective communication within the home between the you know the male and the female yep, to ask questions, yeah, to have yeah. proper dialogue yes. and actually listen. And to hear the response from the female or the male, the problem is too, is a lot of time now guys don't want to share how no. they feel. They don't want to share their thoughts shunned. and ideas because it potentially gets, you know, a twist or manipulated or yep. misunderstood. Yep. So they suppress it. Yep. And then they just go and they do their thing and they go out and they provide or they, they do their job and, yep. then they call, and there's this disconnect, but it yeah. should lead to it because in order to have that proper blend of steel and silk, yep. it has to fit within the model in which you're living, but it only, it only is actually able to be acted upon if you know through dialogue and conversation yep, and asking exactly. questions. And if, if you can't, Otherwise you're assuming. Oh, for if sure. If you can't feel vulnerable as a man, I mean, Oof. honestly, well, that's testosterone. Tanker. Well, they think they think vulnerability is weakness. That's not at all. No. Right. Mm -hmm. And you understand? Not at yeah. all. It's, it's not at vulnerable, all. vulnerable is not not uh, not weak at all. And I so, cry all actually, the time. Yep. So it takes Especially you very Titanic. <laughs> Titanic. That was a good. I watched that by myself. Yeah. I get this. I was actually in Cambridge School, and I watched Armageddon, <laughs> and then I, I and, and I didn't it. pay for the movie, and I went right to Titanic. You, you cried. And I watched it and some of that. So, yeah. do you ever notice when you watch Titanic? You just hope in the boat doesn't sink. <laughs> yeah, you think there's a new, yeah, it's like, there's a new, it's gonna like, be a spin at the end. It's not gonna sink, they're gonna change it, it's not a reality show, yeah. so yes. I did cry though, I'm not gonna lie, three times almost in the new Maverick movie, the new Top Gun, because that was just so beautiful, so manly. Mm -hmm. Spoiler just all alert. those moments. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, almost. I was tearing up on a couple times. Do you guys ever watch Star Wars and hope that the Death Star doesn't blow up? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I do. I hope it every time. <laughs> I just all I know is that after Titanic, I became an artist. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so let's let's talk about this because it's kind of there's there's an old saying: strong men produce good times, good times produce weak men, weak men produce bad times. You just saw that. I agree. With you say yep. It's like we could kind of go from look at the presidents, last two presidents. Yep. 
say what you want, but I think there's a different characteristic between strong and weak that way. Yeah, now, a lot of people strong. will spin our words now. The feminist movement will spin our words and saying, you know, it's chauvinistic. I don't know. No, here here happens this. I'd rather have a, I'd rather, once again, give me Aaron Rodgers as a quarterback compared to, you know, another quarterback that's like, you know, I'm sorry, uh, I, you fall confidence. You don't fall weakness and, and pity mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, therefore, guess what happens? You know, it's this idea of uh, we're going to fall. Remember, actually, John Maxwell, past pastor, number one leadership coach in the world, he said, listen, he goes, you know, he just he said that. He goes, during times of struggle, people look for people that can lead and are strong. They don't look for weak. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, and I watched him in his Maxwell moment talk about that. Yeah. I was like going, it's true. During times, you're gonna look for. You, you, when times of battle, you don't look for weak people. Yeah, well, you I think, don't. I think you know, to think of as bad company. Uh, Corrupt. Oh, good yeah. character. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, uh, Jordan Peterson character. talked about like when you grew up in what age? Like the boomers, they had a they had it completely different than than my generation. And and me growing up between the late '90s and early 2000s, there's not a lot of bad stuff that was going on. So I, yeah. honestly, it was good times. Like yep. for me. I didn't. I wasn't taught a lot of those things. I didn't see the wars. Or I didn't like see. Yep. The, Go through this, depression. All these other things. Exactly. Right? So like also the times that you're growing up in definitely. And I feel like some of the kids nowadays mm -hmm. what they're going through and potentially even like a recession coming. Like there might be hard times coming and there's going to be some. There's going to be some different mindsets from these kids. It's going to be up. different mindsets, but it's also going to potentially if, in this current topic, men versus or steel versus silk, yep. is it's going to expose oh, a yeah, lot exactly. of what is oh, being put into motion yes, for exactly. the, the so-called justification. We're they're going to crumble. We're going to get a recession. Guess what happens? The strong will survive. Exactly. It yes. will. And the strong men are going to survive, and they're going to go, and they're going to do what they need to do that way. But they're it's bad that the rich get richer. That hard workers get, you know, whatever. That's what, mm -hmm. they, that's what they put. Well, that's how, the, that's how they play it, to make every, every outcome equal. Yep. It's not, I'm sorry. I know this is something funny. Let's talk about this. There should never be an equality of outcome, because you know why? I don't want my competitors to have the equality of outcome. Hey, um, here, put it this way. If you're dating, you want to beat the other guy out for the girl. Agreed. Always. Always. And it's not jet. And here's the thing. Well, you're just jealous. Oh, it's no. No, it's territorial. Territorial. This is what we are Very ingrained territorial. to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And is it funny? All the guys are sitting out here shaking their head. Do you get my point? And so, and it, and it will only be the people that are trying to downplay men that will disagree with this. Mm -hmm. yeah, Do you understand? Yeah. And it's like because what they'll do is they'll think us being us is actually downgrade them. Us being us does not make you women weaker. It actually makes you stronger. Yep. And the fact that sometimes in some of this coming out there and you question it and you question it and you question it or you speak against it, what do you think breeds insecurity? Yeah, mm. and let me, let me speak about this from a business standpoint. Let know people why you want me confident. Because you know something? A recession's coming. It is. Yeah. It's already here. It's already there. Yep. Do, you want a, do you want a CEO, do you want to order the company go, uh, all right, guys, we're going to do everything we can to, to, to make it through and not lay and, and, and not so lay out. Like, meek and yeah. mild. No, you want the, and I did this to our company. So listen, we will dominate during this recession. Yep. We will, because we have an amazing thing to offer people. And guess what happens? Everything's gonna be okay. And I said that as, and, cause you know why? And then people go, okay, good. I can get behind that. Someone you asked saying? that in yeah. a Thursday meeting that we did. Uh, and, and all of a sudden we're just, we, we laughed, not realizing like she's serious because like we went through kind of like that whole COVID. Honestly, that was a mini recession yeah, basically for grew. everybody, and we did well. And so I, us were laughing because we we're like, we we don't care. You know, it doesn't matter. Right? But well, it's but funny because we, if we're in a recession, and we're everyone's stressed in the nation, right? Yeah. Look at all the glamours we've got to help you boost yeah. the economy. <laughs> and winning. Buy <laughs> your support. You Boom. <laughs> you can use the one. QR code in the corner. There. <laughs> wow, that was. Uh, Wow, Perfect setup. Favorite wow. setup right there. You're welcome. Are you in the sales department? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is QVC no, for the let's, wellness let's, way. Let's go back to that. And let's go back to that. Because here's what happens this. And let's go back to that, that empathy and understand it that way. You see, I don't ask people to understand what I, what I go through as a CEO. I ask to be empathetic. You know what I'm saying? So if, they, so if they can't see what I can see, just, just put yourself in my shoes and go, hey, let him do his thing. And, mm -hmm. and that, that even happens in all relationships. Because once again, as confident, laser focused, uh, um, driven that we are as men, and I mean this from, a, from, a, from females, guess what happens? We're not asking you to understand us. It's impossible. It really is. Like I said, if you don't want to know what goes through our brain every single day, it'd freak half you guys out. Do you say I'm? Because the idea is our competitiveness, our aggressiveness, things like that. But the idea is this, is it has some, you know, has some, we have empathy for it, you know what I'm saying? Because we understand, we understand that you need the silk side. Yep. We understand those things that way. We understand that you can't just, we, we get it, we get it, we get it. We understand, especially if you're taught. And that's one thing that I think um, <clears throat> why I'm kind of so 
aggressive when I'm talking to men about that way because, like to Brandon, I don't mean this negatively that way, but if your dad doesn't teach you how to be a man, where are you gonna learn from? Culture? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry. Yeah. I said, Brand, this is what's like. I it, did some it, really it, dumb stuff because I wasn't taught certain things. Yeah. And now I'm like sitting here, I'm like, why did I do those things? I just had but, this you know? the other day where, you know, I had to be the disciplinarian as a father. Yep. And my son was making some unfortunate decisions. Nothing super horrible, but it's about responsibility and effective communication. And it came into a situation where he was not making wise decisions, but I was the disciplinarian. I was the father yep. the teacher but then all i got in return is just let you know just let him be he's a good kid he's it's not about whether he's a good kid i'm trying to instill into trying him to grow aspects of being a yeah. responsible respectful young man if he doesn't get that pushback mm. yep. that molding that shaping what we're supposed to do yep not just because of discipline, yeah. right? But that molding and shaping, they're gonna go out there, my son, and he's gonna get chewed up and spit out. That's well, what we're I, supposed I tell to people, do. Man, do you really think, it's really funny, that's why, that's to go back to even the business world that way. Do you really think that your competitor cares if you feed your kids? I'm sorry. Absolutely not. Guess what happens? If you can't, that, that's why people always told me, and I said, I'm going to be, you know, nice about this, mm -hmm. but you always hear about this in, in, in churches and over-spiritualized people. It's like, well, they're a child of God, and they're this, this, and they're saying all this bull crap to, to actually take their inaction when we made of this, is, I'm sorry, guess what happens? Do you really think, I mean sincerely, if you're sitting there right now, and let's say that, uh, like people say this, they're like, you know, well, we gotta care about grandma. And okay, so, so we got a lockdown for, for all these weeks. Guess what happens this? If you can't feed your kids, do you really care about somebody else's grandma? Mm -hmm. I've asked every Christian person and they say, well, not really. See, that's the reality of the kind. They won't have those kind of conversations because they want things to feel good. Well, you know, grandma, this, this. I'm like going, no, listen, the competitive nature is this. We're going to win. And mm -hmm. win even means I just got to survive. Because mm -hmm. do you really think that the competitor in any aspect? Do you really think, guys, I mean it sincerely, you know, it's like being the nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Do you really think that if two guys are going after a girl, do you, do you really think, for example, that he doesn't want to win over you? You know what I'm saying? He's going to do what it takes to get it that way. And so I tell people, I was like, listen, you better be programmed to win. You better be programmed to actually, because you know what's up is this? It's really funny. People don't remember. Uh, here, watch this. Um, winners or losers. Who, who actually is known more? Oh, the winners. The winners, always. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And that's just life in general, yep. do you know what I'm saying? Yep. And see, you can't have that, because you can't let people know that, that they lost. I'm telling you right now, all these young men that they're not keeping score of soccer and they're keeping this this way, the, one of the greatest things that can drive a guy is actually, is actually being a, losing every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you gotta, you gotta get them to understand that, listen, because that will drive them a little bit more aggressive that way. That's where a little bit of the aspect of humility comes in. Yep. It grounds you, it lets you know that there's always work to be done, right? Because if you really want it, you're gonna put in the work to be able to mm -hmm. get it. But equalizing everything takes away the competitive nature. It actually neuters an yep. element of the male spirit, if you will. It's like, yep. well, then why, then why even put forth the energy? Yeah. Why even go for it? Why even pull out all the stops to get what I want? It doesn't matter really anyways. Yep. Just because I, I can work my ass off and that person over there doesn't put in half yep. or even an inkling of what I do, still wins. Yep. You know, a, a good way to sum up a good healthy guy, it's from a movie, not the Bible this time. Well, it's in the Bible, I'm sure, somewhere, but uh, Thor. Remember the first Thor when he's teaching the kids? The Book of Travis. Yeah. Yep. The Book of Travis. <laughs> Chapter 4, <laughs> verse 12. No, I'm going to chop up. No. <laughs> I want more liver. But here, back, back to my quote. It's from the movie Thor. He goes, a wise king uh, never looks for war, but always prepares for war. Always so, prepares. So always stay like strong. Always stay focused. Yep. You know, because you don't know when... Well, oh, yeah, that, the pounding in the door comes, you know, That's right. and, and we and we have and basically as a dad, you know, especially you have sons, you got to prepare them for war. You do because it's a battle out there. Yep. It really is. And then when they're not prepared for war, then what happens is it's why male suicide is so much more dominant than female suicide. Mm -hmm. Because once again, males, you if these kids are and you're going to see this generation of Brandon's be a, even more highly suicidal because their mama told them that they're special. The mom told them that they're all winners. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that and the dads didn't do anything about it and now they're going to be 40 and broke and no girl wants you mm -hmm. and they're going to go what's worth living 
Yeah, that's, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to happen. I, I see it already. I was just part of a, a, a church camp last week. I was there for the weekend. There was a, they asked to raise your hands if you deal with depression or with suicidal thoughts. And half the people raised their hands, including some adults. Mm -hmm. And that's scary. That's, that's the path we're going down if we keep trying to teach people to live this certain way and, and make men down here and shrink them yep. down, you know, and their value and their sense, sense of worth. Event. Thank you. Right. But, on, so, but and, and, and that's why it's important who speaks in the men's life. And yes. I'm going to say mm -hmm. something yes. very controversial. Guess what? It's guys that need to speak in other guys' lives. Yes. No, because true. of the what goes to our head, you can say I'm, and what goes to it, because you know what happens this, is you've ever noticed, and this happens a lot, and this is one, you see this in marriages a lot that way, that all of a sudden, a woman will be, you know, think the way the guy's gotta be this way, and then he conforms to it that way, and he hates himself. Well, let's, let's use your logic mm -hmm. in, in your book. Uh, well, first off, iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. so, so to support your- Steel your, sharpens your, steel. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, a woman is also different every seven days. Yep. So you might get a different- Response. Uh, thought, response. So how can you as a man, be refined in a healthy way if you're getting different, you know, <laughs> perspectives answers. every week. <laughs> and I, it's, that, that's how God created them, and that, yep. that, that's, that's how it is. So it's important to have good uh, role models, good male role models in your life. I yeah. mean, it's just, it's healthy. But yep. it is, it's, you know, having someone speaking into your life that actually has the right to be able to speak into your life. Because everybody's got ideas. Sure. Everybody's got opinions. But do they have the right, and should they be speaking? into well, real life. It, you don't you don't ask a 300 pound man how to lose weight. You don't ask a guy that's broke and lives on the government how to make money. Yes. You don't, you know, in, on top of it's like, and, and you know, people say, well, Doc, well, you know, you talk about the hormone seminar, you know, how'd you learn to be silky? Okay, well, because I, I actually interviewed women. <laughs> and and I, I did, I said, okay, what do you need as a woman? Mm -hmm. And stuff like that, and things like that. And so then those traits, now it's really funny, because that's why, that's why and it's funny in hormone seminar, and, Granted, now the hormone summer doesn't exist anymore, but it's kind of interesting. Like uh, um, the the things that you know we know as men, that we are very aggressive and, and things like that. And so we can we actually can train ourselves to do what you need. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, and the great thing is like this. That's why people say, well, you'll want to do it. No, that's not what we want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But actually knowing to be that silk part. You know what I'm saying? Vice versa, because you know if it's all steel, you know she's gonna be missing some things that. If you say he doesn't want to do it, you got to remember though, like for me, at yep. the end of the day, I want to win. Right. That's so it. If, so you do want to so, do it. So I do want to do right. it. Right. Because you want to win. Absolutely. I, wanna, I want to make her. more money. I want to win mm -hmm. with the I want to win with my kids. I want to win across the board. Yes. Does it mean that I like the process of winning or that I might have to challenge the way that I'm thinking or yep. my mm -hmm. belief system and hear some outside perspectives that are yep. going to tweak things? No, because I think I've already got it all figured out, but I prove over and over that I don't. Right. So do I want to do it? So, yes, because so I want to win. Let's take your, let's, let's run on this a little bit because I love what you said this way. When we want to win, once again, we'll do what we need to win. Yes. And ladies, we'll do that for you too. Yes. We, we, will, we will get to know you to a T because we want to win with you. Yes. And mm -hmm. so therefore, let us win. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That means let us in, let us, let us figure you out that way. And, and if you have a real man that wants to win, he'll want to win with you too. Yeah. Yeah. He will. He'll want to win in his career. He'll want to win in his marriage. He'll want to win with his kids. He'll want to win in every aspect of life because that's why train your kids to be winners. Don't train your kids not to keep score. Don't train your kids to yeah. accept losing. Actually understand losing and go, why did that guy beat out me for that girl? Have to be better. You saying? Mm -hmm. And going, well, he's better looking. Well, that's not always true. Because ladies, here's what happens. If you have a guy that treats you, if you have a guy that's all steel, you're going to get upset because they're not going to be that pretty anymore to you because you want a guy that's silk. And ladies, you want a guy, you have a guy that's all silk and he's all this stuff that way, you're going to be, you're going to be bored and so you're going to look for a guy, a steel guy that way. Mm -hmm. And so I've always said, you got to be steel and silk together because you know why? Because I want to win. Yep. Yes, I want to exactly win. You know, I want to win. And when a guy is winning at that point in time, it doesn't really matter who's the provider, who it, or title or status. Or yep. it, it doesn't. It breaks all that stuff down because when you're at home and you're on that level where you're able to win, you're able to conflict, yep. you're able to communicate and have connection and be vulnerable and transparent. Win and lose those things that those outside kind of societal pressures don't matter. Don't matter. You know what? They you don't know what? matter. And just kind of going back a little bit to the what you said before about guys, about needing to, to refine guys. A fart smeller once told me, I mean a smart feller <laughs> once told me. 
<laughs> no. It wasn't take me. The five, take the five biggest influences in your life. That's who you are. That, the, the five most close people you surround yourself with, that's who you are. So if you're struggling as a man out there right now and you want a little brain teaser to take home, it's your home. <laughs> but just write down the, the five people you hang around with the most and that's who you are. I mean, that's who you are molding yourself to be. So if you're around bad company, you're, you're gonna be in a rough spot. You're, you're not gonna win. Or even if you have nobody around you at all. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, a difference, yeah, you know, you know guys too. just hanging out with the guys, but if you have nobody that is a walking life with you, yep. that you're able to talk and process. See, when we so think- So the spouse is supposed to be. We, so we're supposed, well, to a degree, yeah. right? Because the, this is, sometimes I just need a guy in my life to oh, be able guy, to yes. talk, to hear something, yep. because I don't, I'm, I'm not looking to be fixed or told this or that, just or to hear wrong. it or yeah. told that it's wrong. Yep. But maybe sometimes there's a way, there's a perspective that I might get from another guy that's going to actually produce more fruit yeah. than what it would if it would have come. Well, it comes this. Right. It's like it, it's like from this. You need multiple people in your life. Absolutely, you do. no the, doubt. The idea is if you spend all the time with your spouse, you're going to go crazy. You spend all the time with your kids, go crazy. You spend all the time with your friends, go crazy. There needs to, needs to be that diversity aspect that way. Healthy balance. That's right, because, you know, like we, we went golfing yesterday, and guess what happens? We talked about the craziest shit. Do we did, saying? yes. I, he golfed. I lost balls. <laughs> well, but guess what happens? The, our conversation, <laughs> stuff of like that, which is going to be different than if you're... Yeah, I lost balls. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be different than if you're hanging with the person that you love. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, because you know why? Because there's going to be different communication if you talk. And on top of it, guess what happens? This is like, there's going to be all different aspects of that relationship, but it's, it's needed in all of them. Do you yes. see But then the, the end result is, you know, the end result in everything that we talk about compared to this, and this is why it's, it's really difficult. We had one of our docs um, just talk about this is they went to a man's group at their church. And he said it was the same men complaining about the same things, actually talking about the same things. And it's like, and he had to leave because he's been taught to be a winner. In a marriage, what do you mean a winner? A winner, for example, will look at their life and always try to make it better because he wants to win in life. Mm -hmm. He wants to win in his faith. You know what I'm saying? He wants to win, you know, in himself and his, in his marriage and his kids and his job that way. And so a winner, just like, you know, it's really funny. I, I would love to sit down with Aaron Rodgers and talk to him about, not about, you know, um, him as um, a football player, but if Aaron Rodgers would go to some other career with the mindset he has, I think he'd be very successful. Oh, he'd be good. Jeopardy. What's that? Yeah, we should invite Aaron Rodgers on the show oh, and talk about and give him discount double chat can say, listen, but here's evidence. I'm fascinated. I am fascinated. So therefore I want to learn from people that will accomplish things like that because once again, you know, and now, now they're on. It's interesting because now watch this. This is this has happened too. And I think this is where I think this is where men can be taught a little bit better is we are meant to be laser focused, but you can focus on your career like crazy and forget about your wife and kids, and yes. that can lead to detriment. Yes. So that's where yep. if you see a man of success and you go, because I've, I've actually interviewed a guy. Remember, I'm a constant learner. I'm What I do is I look at some things, I'm going, I have empathy for somebody that's, that has done a lot more than I have. I'm going, I'm not in your position. I don't know what it's like. And that's what I talk about, is in, in ranks of empathy should be more responsibility. So I sit there and go, Aaron Rodgers has more responsibility than I do in different ways. So I'm going, I want to see this. Or even like, let's say, I, I, I've heard some, interviewed some very successful business people that were worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And I interviewed them, the mindset it took for them to get there. But then I would ask them more questions and it would be like, okay, you know, what's your marriage like? What's your kids like? What's things like that? You know, and I'm like, and, and if they failed dramatically in that, I was like going, okay, so they stayed layers focused on one aspect of life, but then they entered other things in their life and they've kind of not winning not winning, you know, Sam, it's like going, all right, I think then either if you're, the, if you're going to be that way, then maybe you should stay single. You know, saying Cause start doing other things in life that way. It's, it's yeah. kind of rough. Yeah. And then, then you're not winning in many areas and that can take away from a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So yes, but. And yeah. I think really at the end of the day too, I think a guy <clears throat> has to be willing to wrestle with himself. He's got to know what he wants and what it potentially takes to get to where he wants to be and then surround himself with the people that are able to speak into it because yeah. they, th those individuals are where, like if you, if I want to be you, mm -hmm. you've been where I've been, but you're where I want to be. Right. 
and you have a proven track record. I can mm -hmm. see it within your family, within your business, within your your priority list, then I want you to speak into my life, right. right? In order to do great things, you need to surround yourself with great people. Great people. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Not yeah. people with great ideas and opinions who nope. are just going to validate my emotions and my feelings so I can complain more, but someone that is actually going to equip me to be able to put action yep. to a plan. Look yep. at this bicep here on the camera. Wrong one. Right. <laughs> Which one? Both. Are we flexing? Are we flexing? <laughs> we were doing push-ups before, you know what I'm saying? So there, you know what I'm saying? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. flex. <laughs> yes, we just we just made our female audience go kind of crazy. You can say <laughs> it's like that well, new trailer the, from Thor when uh, stuff gets thrown down. Now I'll just start fainting. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's that, Rob? Remember the Thor trailer now, where the oh, guy yes. whips his clothes up and then all of a sudden the girls will start fainting. Yeah, that's basically what just happened. Speaking of Thor, my favorite Thor is the fat one from uh, Endgame. Oh, yeah, what is hilarious? Yeah, yeah. the, the, the drunk. <laughs> Yep. Just eating peanuts constantly. Yeah, drinking it gets beer. Up here. Playing I Xbox. That you are sit up here. It gets wow. warm with all I these lights on you. Some of that. You, 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 you know, I'm like, this, this this it's just us. It's a little bit tougher. It's just us. It has nothing to do. Okay. What other points that I remember people asked out there? Da 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 da. Let me see. Oh, this is one thing that's interesting. I think that what happens is this is kind of. They say, Doc. You know, are men emotional? Um, here's what happens. Yes. There's, a, there's a different kinds of emotions than you have that way, but I will tell you this: what you really want to stimulate a man's testosterone levels, and let's get into this because is actually it's kind of funny. It's like people think it's all sexual. That's actually not true at all. That's not true at all. And what happens is this: as a guy gets older, watch this, because a man will start understanding themselves even more. Boom. It's 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 about one thing. Yep. It's about connecting. Agree. Yep. It really is. Amen. Because what happens is this: if a woman mentally connects with a man, she's got him forever she does she really does Sarah it's like because that's because I have it and that's why now remember the easiest way to disconnect with a man is tell him how she should he should be and that's not him or disconnect yeah. yep and they will disconnect from you and guess what happens it's so and what happens is this and that's why I say ladies be careful how you speak to a man mm -hmm. be careful how you especially if you have a good man and you don't like what he says or don't like what he says about it instead of actually coming to them with questions about maybe why they've done it they speak to them, and guess what happens? It's be careful on that. Yeah. Be careful. You have to refine us, not tell us what we can't do in regards to, like, well, let, you're, you're no good at this, or you're, well, let me give you you're an example. this, you're that. Let me, let me give you, I'll, I'll give you a real-life example that I actually talked to Faith and Devin about, mm -hmm. okay? And once again, my daughter and her boyfriend, I and I said this, yes. It's kind of funny. I was really speaking to them. Now, now remember, let's, let's talk about this. There's characteristics that every individual has. You want to see the characteristics of your child? Watch them when they're young. I have four daughters, grew up in the same household. Guess what? They're dramatically different. Yeah. We all know that we have more than one kid, all right? So there's God-given characteristics that these kids have. Now, guess what? I have characteristics, you have them, and we're all different. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why no two people can I'll be like, the same. Yep, I've yep. always people said, I've had this one comment one time. It said, Doc, you're a cult leader. I said, I'm a really bad cult leader. Do you know why? Because cult leaders want you all to think the same. Yeah. And I want everybody to know that they're individual, that they <laughs> think that definitely that they're independent that way. So I'm a horrible cult leader, okay? But get this. So now, those characteristics. Now, they're wrong. The refining process as a parent is to look at my kids' characteristics and actually, so if you ever noticed this, perfect example. You know, uh, if you see a fat woman, a little kid will say, she's fat, and you'll even say it in public. Now, once again, it's truthful, but you should refine your. There's a little your, bit of grace for yes, the child, yes. right? Mm -hmm. But it, you know what's happened? So, in the ideas, in, in, in there's characteristics, and the idea of maturing them is, and now I've actually defined maturity. Maturity is knowing your characteristics and use them at the appropriate time and the appropriate amount. Mm. For example, I, I, give a, I look at all the characteristics, I have certain ones, and guess what happens? Is one of them mm. is bold, okay? Now, no. people that don't understand boldness are not bold will be very critical to bold people and say, oh, yeah. don't be bold. It's because it's misunderstood. Yep. Don't be bold. And I'm like, ladies, if you say that to a bold guy, just directly like that, and you're married to him, he will disconnect from you in a heartbeat. Yep. Because here's what happens. Because she's not speaking to his confidence. When that. Now, Durham, let me give you an example I used. I used with Devin Faith the other day. So I said to Faith, it was kind of funny, because you know she's been dating Devin for a while. Uh, they're very serious in the relationship that way. And I said to Faith, I said, Faith, is there a characteristic that Devin has <laughs> 
that may drive you nuts. Yeah. And okay, and because uh, you know, once you get by the, all the 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 you know the honeymoon phase and some of that, the lovey it's w. like lovey dovey. And I said, no, obviously they're still lovey dovey. But here's what happens. And she's like, and she smiled. I said, yes, there is one. See? And I said, now, I said, you know, understand that characteristic. And here's what we were talking about this. And it was a Sunday and stuff of like that. The list and of I, don't likes. Well, here's what, but here's what happens. And I said, now, here's what happens. When you saw that characteristic, were you critical of it and said you shouldn't have done that? You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have done this be way. That. Or did you walk up to him and say, hey, honey, love your characteristic, but I don't have that, so I don't understand that. Can you explain to me why you're bold? Now, a real man, if he knew he made a mistake and should have been bold during that time, he'd be like, there's the refining process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, honey, for bringing to my attention. I should have done a little bit better. It's great, great, thank you. And so this. Now, if he did it on purpose. Intentionally and she comes along and criticizes him yep. because the Bible says this or a public says this or something yep. this way. It's like, ladies, I don't care how right you think you are, you are gonna destroy that man and he's going to run away from you quickly, even if you're married. Just because you're right doesn't mean that you are right in doing what well, you're about to do. And to the other point, right, you know, I think the idea that a woman would come and try to change or um, challenge the mindset of the man. The characteristics of man. Ask questions. There you go. First seek understanding Ask. before you expect to be understood. If a man uh, getting to that point where he knows himself, yep. if you really came to him and said, you know, I really don't understand your approach or your boldness Help like that. Understand. Can you please explain to me or what that means to you? or what this looks like and what that feels, and, and the why. Because if a man is actually given a chance to speak that and give an answer yep. without it being corrected, yep. or being told that that's wrong or fixed, that's when you're gonna see the confidence and that's where you're gonna get understanding and the aha, oh, that mm -hmm. makes more sense. Yep. And maybe yep. he might also have an epiphany along the way and go, you know what, what are your thoughts? Well, and also this, so let me give you an example. Reciprocating. Yeah. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. Well, just, uh, before you give comes... an example, are you gonna expose Devin what he did wrong? Oh, no, 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 he didn't really do it wrong. <laughs> no, actually, Devin didn't do it wrong. Now, now I mean, it's, I don't mean the negative way, it is that happens this is because if it's a characteristic of him and my daughter doesn't understand it, I taught my daughter, I said, listen, like Ross said, ask him. There's a reason why he would have done it. Because, for example, I, I love this. This is, this is the great thing, and I'm going to really pick on churches right now. When I go to churches, I actually swear more. I do on purpose. It's intentional. Do you say I'm? Because then all the over-spiritualized people that say you can't swear, and stuff of that, they freak out about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I love how they they tear my characteristic, but if you really want to evaluate their life, it's pretty bad in the first place, okay? So not, not mine, theirs, okay? So I love how they, 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 they tear it that way. But you know something, they never ask why I was done. Mm -hmm. And what they do is then they, they say, you shouldn't do this. I'm like, you didn't actually never even asked me why I did it in the first place. Yeah. Or you can have, a, you can have uh, somebody's friends like, well, I don't like that they say that. Just, uh, well, remember, you're not them. Do you say mm -hmm. I'm? So therefore, if there's a characteristic that's different than you, you have to, you have to, that's why you've ever noticed, people have similar characteristics who hang around the most because they're accepted most. You see them? Mm -hmm. And see, so people say, well, then you're not challenging her. That's not true. That's not true at all. It's just that if you are, you know, it's really funny. You know, I grew up in a, with, around truckers. You know, they swear like sailors. Yeah. They really do. <laughs> and so therefore, guess what? I understand it. You know what I'm saying? And then I understand people that don't swear. And it's okay. I see, I'm cool with either one of them. That's my yeah. point. Yeah. But the minute I don't walk up to a person and say, you know something, you should swear more. You say, and on the flip side, it's like, but on the flip side, if there's an intentional reason why somebody's doing it that way, maybe you should be inquisitive why. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I do it on purpose. Yeah, I was going to say, you do a lot of things on purpose. I do, <laughs> but they think, mm -hmm. but because people don't, like he said, ask questions, they, that, yeah. and, and you do it to a guy, it's worse. Yeah. You say, yeah. you do it to a guy, guess what happens? It's like, you don't, especially, and here's what happens, especially if you have a man that's working on himself and confident in who he is and knows who he is, and you come along and try to speak and tell him what he's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 here's here's why. And this is like I'm going. You're gonna lose that guy. You're going to lose him. Yeah. You know, Sam. Now, and the reason why I bring that up is this, because I listen to guys, and we've talked about this many times. We look at guys will really come in in as a patient, and they're just stressed out. They have anxiety, and I'm going, and it's really funny. This happened with one of our docs out west. And all of a sudden, he was like, um, the guy, he's like, Doc, he was, I can't get his testosterone change. And he's depressed all the time, things like that. Yeah. And his testosterone was a little bit low and everything. And no joke, it was really interesting. Do you know what the number th one thing that was actually beating him up? And once he actually understood it, his testosterone would go up. And I'm not joking. It's true. 
his church was telling me how to be. And so every day he felt that he wasn't adequate good enough, enough and good enough. Wow. And then in that, that marriage that way it was, and it was driving him down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The church can't be and, about do's and don'ts. You know, you got to well, actually, the, you gotta dig a little deeper. Well, and that was interesting. I was like, oh, oh my goodness. So it's really funny. And I know some people are going to be offended by the, the aspect of talking about that. But we're trying to get into the fact of this. It doesn't matter if it's a parent. It doesn't matter if it's a friend. It doesn't matter if it's a spouse. It doesn't matter if it's an organization. It matters if it's a company. You start speaking down to a man, he, especially if he knows who he is, you're going to really, really shut that person off. And you can make him very sick and unhealthy and depressed just from that, that thing alone. Yeah, I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's not only just, I mean, there's mm-hmm. more, right? You, you talk down to him. Mm-hmm. You disconnect. Yep. You, you, you sever that connection. And there's so many aspects to it. And even this to a degree, we, you know, we talk about this concept of thriving on encouragement, right? This affirmation aspect. I think it's something that a man, when he's winning, sure, he, ultimately that's the goal. But yep. going along the way, I think that a man also wants to be appreciated and told that what he is doing is making a difference. Sure that it's Wait. valuable. There's something crucial that when a man hears it versus knowing the outcome of what he just did produce this, yep. there's something also that happens on the inside of us that when someone comes and thank you. My well, dignif- I appreciate you. My dignify page, I think the second or third yep. one is thrives on encouragement. Yep. But see, just because it's not, yep. what, which is like a, it's not a personality assessment, but it's similar. Just because that's on your motivation, thrive yep. on encouragement, everybody thrives on encouragement. True. Everybody, everybody yeah. needs yeah. to be, yeah. to hear these things. Thank you. Oh, you're crushing it. You're, you're amazing. Thank you for the, this idea, the attitude of gratitude, appreciation. Yep. It's more than just giving it, but it's, there's something to receive, and that yep. will help continue to instill that confidence to get, you want the steel and silk? Yep. It's right there. Ooh. It's right there. Mm-hmm. But see that, but the, because remember, when you're encouraged, you'll actually do it more. Yes. You well, really are. It's like, when you, know, you speak, when they speak, and I'm going to use your, you're gonna use your phrase. When you speak life into somebody, guess what happens? Now, life does not mean that you have to like tell them everything to do. It's warm great. and fuzzy. It's not exactly. true at all. Because here's what happens this. It's like, if you lose in a sport, there can be encouragement on that loss, which can make you a winner. Yes. Mm-hmm. You see? And, yes. and so what happens to this is it's, it's kind of funny. It's like, and, and that being said, what it allows people to do is like, say, listen, I can speak into their life, even though you lost and going, okay, here's a direction that can make you a, a winner. And that can even make you more motivated, more mm-hmm. exciting that way. But encouragement is always there. But tell them, you know, tell them people that you just try. Here's that one. Now, never tell anybody trying your best is always good enough because people will always not try hard enough. Exactly. You know? It's like, no, that guy's better than you. Yeah. And if you want to win, guess what happens? He dug deeper. Well, he dug I was, deeper. I was, I was telling my kids, do your best, and then whatever the outcome is, the outcome. Don't try your best. Because yep. you're right, I don't think people will try. It gives you kind of a, a gray area in, in that interpretation. you got to do your best, and then what happens, we can reflect on after. Yep. There is a, what did you say, Patrick? You always be content but never be satisfied. Even when you're you win, that's content. another thing, too, that is never taught that actually the one thing that I definitely love that my dad did was every, even if I won a game, I get in the car, there'd be no emotion. There'd be no congratulations. Be like, okay. How do you be better? Like what, what did you do that you can be better at? Yeah. And there's always it's, that aspect of like be though. better. You celebrate, even if you, you celebrate your yes. success for a short time. Yep. Yep. But guess what now happens? Now it's on to the next. Yeah. Nobody here, watch this. Yep. Just from a sports analogy. Somebody tell me the Super Bowl champ 15 years ago. So they're wrong. At that time of celebrate, it's good. But guess what happens? You forget. Next. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you know why? Because here's what happens. In a way, think of this way. Um, let's put it this way. If you're not always trying to win, someone's going to steal your job, your spouse, your friends, your life. Kids. <laughs> oh, your kids too, yeah. Your kids. You, you ain't joking. Someone else is going to steal them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you always have to be preparing. That's our whole thing. Even preparing every day to be a winner. Yep. And right now, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Xbox, all those things are taking our kids away right now. And they're influencing mm-hmm. them versus us. Absolutely. It's those outside external stressors that if we're not there as protectors, providers, yep. nurturers, all the elements, all the wonderful attributes, right? It's not gender specific, even though we would say that one might embody more. Yep. If we don't do these things and we are not on point and in a marriage situation yep. as you gentlemen are you know on the same page with each other that's all those external influencers and stressors so when you say they'll steal your kids already have yep they already are who wants to see me wear ross's glasses 
Now, let me throw let me throw a let me throw a total monkey wrench in this as we look at uh, Travis and Ross's glasses. <laughs> you're like the nerdy, you're right. the nerdy male secretary. I like what you did there. That's yes. nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel smarter. My voice, I feel like I can sing right now. Do you? Do it. Very Let's nice. Try it. <laughs> That's a big <laughs> This is not like wearing a pair of Jordans that make you able to slam dunk a ball just because yeah, you wear these you can now sing. I That's right. So now, let's do this. Do you understand that all the attributes that that um, the culture loves is when men have low testosterone? Mm. Let me spin that. Because they become demotivated, not confident, or everything like that. And it's kind of funny, like I said, it's for some reason, the teenage boys, the 20 year olds, the 30 year olds, they want a low testosterone based guy. Mm -hmm. But then if they at 40 and they're overweight and they're not motivated and they're broke, now they're chastised for not being a, a, a certain kind of man. And they're out. And I'm watching this happen with the obesity, driving testosterone down with all the phytoestrogens, all the things they're trying to and do. The foods and, and the everything. foods yeah. and actually, and then speaking down to these and not, you know, you want some of this, you want to give a teenager you know, um, some great testosterone. Speak life into that boy. Mm -hmm. Show him confidence that way. It'll jack up like crazy, and you'll have a wild man on your. You'll have a wild boy on your hands. And then here's what happens. You want your teenage boys to be freaking monsters. I want Devin, as probably my future son-in-law. Guess what happens? This to be a total monster, but self-controlled. Because mm -hmm. if that monster, for example, is driven every day, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a very happy daughter. Think about mm -hmm. you know. Go back to when we were you know, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. One of the big things we took, we did a show on years ago was ADD, ADHD. Yep. You want to see something that crept into society because we had these young boys, girls to a degree too, that were acting out, that were yep. distracted. And so what we started doing is we started medicating them yep. And, yep. and neutering the spirit of a young boy, yep. trying to reduce him, trying to calm him down because there was something inherently wrong with him. Yep. And what did all of those ADD medicines or you know those types of yep what do they do what are answer, the side effects answer answer go ahead Jeff 260 testosterone Adderall yep Adderall mm. Ritalin yep. Dexedrine so you get you get kids on this and we start talking about the neutering of that male spirit on the yep. inside of them but it's not only it's like you said it's in the foods and it's just this is like crazy it's well, systemically across the board yes yep. Matt Walsh Agreed. actually just got, got crucified on Twitter because he said that ADD is not real and stuff of that. And um, it's kind of cool because I agree with what I was saying. Because mm -hmm. what happens is, here's a, no, no, people say, well, Doc, you know, you went through some hyperactive things when you were little and things like that. Yes, but you know something? I used to eat, you know, Captain Crunch and we all do things that way. And there's sugar really laces. Too. Yeah, there's yeah, stimulants yeah, yeah. and stuff of that. So, but what happens is this, but the end, re, end result of it that way is you're already stimulating a boy that shouldn't have been stimulated. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So therefore, I, I kind of agree with Matt Walsh on that aspect. It's like, it's a made up reason to give you know, um, an excuse, an excuse for, why they're for doing what they're doing. And I know people, like I said, just like they attack Matt Walsh and I going, well, you don't understand what my kid went through. It's like, no, 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 listen, um, instead of medicating him, why don't you train him up? Yep. Do you understand? Train him up. You know, we, we all have those things that go on. And on top of it, you know, the, when that, when this one person attacked Matt Walsh and developed my daughter, like, okay, were they vaccinated? Okay. There you go. There's a the culprit. Uh, what, how much sugar is that kid eating? Sure. What kind of nutrients give all the things that and stuff? It's like, well, well, yeah, we do all the bad stuff. Well, then guess what? So you wonder why your child has, you know, brain changes that way. Mm -hmm. But just to label and grab onto a, a condition, people, people so, you know, it's, it's like this: they so grab onto their condition, it becomes part of them. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what, them. so right now. So people yes. say, well, you know, Doc, what can we do right now? Uh, you actually make the conscious aspect of change. It really is. And it's really funny, and you may have to shut down the chatter if you're a guy and you had your mom you know, speaking down to you, your spouse or girlfriends, they speaking down to you, you just got to go silent. Hey, listen, you know, um, everybody's got to go silent with you a little bit that way. There's a big, you know, if you're into the social media, right? And I know most of you have, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, right? If you're watching there, especially for guys right now, mm -hmm. there's a, there's this huge push for guys. And I don't know why this is, but yep. they're saying if you're getting a response from the world that you're not liking, disconnect from the world for six months, Focus on yourself. Yes. Build yourself mm -hmm. physically. Focus on your your goals, your aspirations, and commit and work hard for six months. Detach from everybody. Don't let anybody in. Prioritize yourself. And it's interesting that there's I've been seeing it. There's this huge push for this idea to disconnect yep. and go inward yep. and focus on self and rebuild, and then show up in six months and take the world by storm. And here's what's happened. Okay. Here's what's happened. You're going to go from being influenced to be an influencer. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, I have every social media there is. I have a whole media team that way. 
I'm not influenced by the outside world that way. Mm -hmm. Actually, so in, I'm pushing against it and putting this stuff out like this. And what happens, hey, Durham, we are, I know there's going to be people that just don't like what we said, but guess what happens? You're not my influence. Yeah. I'm, I'm not actually, advocating to disconnect for six months, but I'm just saying that, no, there that is a, there's, a very, there's a very strong push, that a message going out to guys right now who, because there is this high element of suicidal ideation, um, this feeling of not being good enough, yep. inferior, and but across by, the board. But by disconnecting, you can step back and have a, a real conversation with yourself as going, who is speaking life to me? Yes. And remember, life does not mean all encouragement and stuff yes. like that. It could be like, you need to get your butt out and get a job. Just, or, you, need yeah. to be, you need to be a good man this way. You need to do those things that way. So the idea when we say encouragement, encouragement does not mean it's all sunshine and roses. Encouragement to a guy is, can be as simple as, hey, listen, your actions you have right now are not congruent with what you want. See, people's, people's desires in life and their actions, I can honestly tell you, very rarely match up. You're saying, I want to be wealthy. Okay, then stop spending emotionally. Um, you know, I, I want this. I, I, I want to succeed in life. Then stop watching the Packers every Sunday and wasting four hours. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're saying, see what happens is their actions, what they, what they do and what they want is two different things. And I'll sit there and you think, you guys hear me harping on time. Don't tell me you want more business success in life and sit there and watch sports. Because I love Aaron Rodgers and what he does that mm -hmm. way, but Aaron Rodgers did not put money in my pocket. Amen. And so I'm not gonna sit there and waste four hours. Now, how I can become a Packer fan is if my family is a huge it. Packer fans. Yes. Then guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna paint myself green and gold and probably wear a number Woo! 12 jersey and root like crazy because then I can spend time with what I want in my life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so that's what I tell people. Priority. Instead, you just watch rom coms all day. That's right. <laughs> having four girls, it was like, we got to do watch. I, I've learned to love the rom coms and having girls, Disney movies like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And stuff. But to get my point though, yeah. see, that's that's the point. So the, that's where, so if you sit down with somebody and I sit down with a guy and like, well, Doc, I want to be more successful. Do you understand the first thing I ask them is? Their time management. Their time management. Because you know what's this? Then, oh, well, Doc, what'd you do last night? Or, uh, what, or sir, what'd you do last night? I'm just saying in general. Oh, watch three hours of movie. Why did you watch three hours? Was, was anybody with you? Well, no. I just needed to get away. And my mm. first response is this. From the life that you created? Mm. From the life that you created, you want to get away from it. You understand? I, I don't get that. See, if you want to get away and reevaluate yourself, but then you reevaluate yourself saying, I'm not going to put things in my life and wasting three hours on a movie. And now remember, you can go to the movies, you can watch a movie, but it better be, it better be with the appropriate people. Otherwise, you are just, I'm sorry. Watching a movie by yourself and you want certain things in life, including uh, success or a good relationship with your kids or a good relationship with your spouse that way, and you're just sitting around doing that, sorry, you're, you're not going to gain it by that. Think of how many episodes of The Office you could watch in those three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quantity over quality. That's right. 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 Well, so, yeah, um, going off that point, though, fear of failure, too. Like, you know, most guys you're not don't embrace failure. We were talking that earlier, but that comes back, like, reason why guys sit down and watch TV is because there's this stimulation that whatever they, they feel good about it. They don't want to fail. They don't want to go out and, and try things and fail at a business or fail with girls even or whatnot. Or they don't want to ask the questions or they just don't know themselves. So we need to write a book. All these things we're talking about. We need to write mm -hmm. a book and we need to we need to get out there a list. All I'm thinking about is liver right now. I want yeah. more. That's right. Actually, I'm, I'm a little hungry for some, I know. some liver. And you some men don't, I mean, male men glandular don't, over there. Men stuff. don't like failure, but they don't like doing things over and over and over mm -hmm. and not knowing that they're winning either, right? And if they're constantly getting this message of that what you're doing isn't going to set you up to win, you're going to stop and you're going to disconnect. And then you start mm -hmm. seeking outside yep. influences to, to give you that sense of validation, gratification. Yep. Um, so whether it's disconnecting for three hours watching some show, you can control that. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. Nobody's going to sit. what are you going to tell? I'm not doing anything wrong. Right. And I'm not putting myself out of a place for risk where apparently I'm, all I'm going to do is fail anyways. Why? Because they've heard it over and over and over. So they just can control yep. and they just sit and they veg. Now we're, we're, we're going to wind up as check my text message and check my, uh, email that way. And if you do have a question for us, you can do this. You can email me at askdrpatrick at thewellnessway.com. So askdrpatrick at thewellnessway.com. And I will definitely uh, um, give you guys uh, an opportunity to um, you know, get some dialogue with us that way and we can get the right person. So send us an email. You got questions that way. 
Um, you know, once again, healthcare related, all things. Also, what you want to see us on the show, are you getting a bunch of text messages? I'll just go and double check your ass on the golf course. Oops, sorry. Nice. For sharing. Nice. <laughs> That's what That's Devin funny. said to me. <laughs> what did he say? <laughs> Devin is like, I'll just go and double check your butt on That's the golf course. Yeah. I, know, yeah. I, know. Over there. See, I know. I saw See? Really. I'm like, see? Was that see? Wrong? It's kind of cool. I see, can't reach see guys, phone. actually, that's one thing nice about guys when they're all testosterone driven. They start, they start going what? No. Testosterone's are girl. Yeah, it's like yeah. and competitiveness. Do you understand? That's the way guys are, and that's a great thing. So, bring it down. Brandon, thank you. Ross, thank you. Travis, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the, men, all the men behind the scenes and uh, and uh, and let's just all the women behind the scenes on this stuff. By the way, thank you. You know, as I said, we're gonna continue. If you do want to see this again, do me a favor. Um, put in the comments below. Patrick's over there in the comments. If you want to see the more of this, and on, share your thoughts. We like to hear what you like to see. That's why I have somebody behind the camera um, sitting on the computer and seeing your thing. We do like to hear your thoughts that way and um, and share it. So uh, if there's one thing that we want you to take away from, remember, steel and silk. You know, Sam. Strong man, you know, um, uh, like I said, and, and like I said, you gotta have them both that way. So what it does allows us to actually speak into this a little bit that way, testosterone there. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna come back and uh, teach on a couple things yet when it comes to certain supplements. People had some questions on that way. So I will see you guys back in a couple minutes. Thank you, Travis. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Brandon, for a wonderful men's round table that way. Now, once again, if you do have some questions or do have some comments, comment below. If you do have some questions, send it to askdrpatrick at thewellnessway.com. So ask Dr. Patrick at thewellnessway.com as we continue to go through. And so what people did is they said, as they were talking about some of the things that you can take, like talking about the glands we're talking about, talking about some of the things, uh, people say, Doc, you know, what do you think some of the most important um, herbs are for women, especially when it talks about progesterone loss and everything? Well, I want to talk about something really quickly right here, and it's called ch uh, chase tree, okay? Or tribulus. Let's start with tribulus here. Tribulus is actually a, a herb for men when it comes to helping that LH production because when it happens, people will actually have some low testosterone issues. And around, this is actually, that's why you look up the herb, it's pretty great because enhances sexual function, promotes hormone health, balance, stress having cardiovascular, physical endurance in athletes. Well, what it really does is actually, it's one of those herbs that help you stimulate your LH from your brain. And that's why it has a major effect on testosterone. People say, well, doc, do you take it? I don't take it at all. Um, now remember, did I take it before? Of course I did, you know, and if I find out that I'm gonna run my body at a hard level that way, guess what happens? I'll take it there for every once in a while. But is it a consistent basis for me? No, you might if you do have low testosterone or want to, you know, support your testosterone production. It's something that is used on a regular basis with our clinicians all over because once again, it's something that does a wonderful job of actually helping stimulate some LH production from that brain. And so when you have people that are having some of that problems, it's a, actually a good way to support the body, give them the building blocks that way. For women, as you can see here, is something called chase tree. Encourages healthy menstrual cycle, eases discomfort, PMS, supports normal female reproduction, promotes healthy balance within the female endocrine system. Now what it does, once again, when we talked about the LH stimulation from the brain, for guys, this does it for women. That's why progesterone production is so vital to now counteract the major hormones of estrogen and what they do, but it actually promotes and keeps them in balance. So a lot of times people say, Doc, how can I balance some of my hormones? It's actually having a very good effect when it comes to uh, progesterone because it counteracts some of those high estrogen dominant conditions. 
most hormonal problems with women are more estrogen or testosterone dominant. Progesterone does a wonderful job of actually counteracting that. So when you do take this, that's why a lot of people take it in the second half of their menstrual cycle from like day 14 till they start menstruating again because it does help a, a high level of progesterone which you need during time. Now, does it have more benefits than just progesterone? Absolutely it does. So people ask about some just two stock if you're gonna give two supplements, one for a male, one for a female. Those would be some of the ones that I would encourage you the most. I, we covered the glandulars and the importance of it that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed our show because we do have a different perspective, which leads me to this. Uh, we just sent it out in our newsletter, in our email. Um, I was interviewed on Robert F. Kennedy's Children's Health Defense TV, so CHDTV, talking about the manipulation of the immune system and how it affects fertility. Um, they're using it to uh, promote the upcoming movie uh, Infertility that was done by Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and also uh, Andrew Wakefield. So you can go to CHGTV and see that link and see the whole 30 minute interview. And what they do is they're taking clips of it and sharing it for the movie. So it's kind of great because when I have such a different perspective that we started a long time ago, like I said, 23 years ago, now once again, I said, I've been doing this for about 30 years. It's because I started when I was in college. And what we end up doing is health became very important to me and have a different perspective and going through what I did as a young kid and through my high school and college years that way uh, in searching out you know, what health really is. And I started doing it a little bit more as I started, I've always done this my whole career. I always ask people, what is health? And you'd be surprised that it's something. Now watch, I'm gonna have you participate, so entertain me here for a second. If I, and I'm gonna have even the studio guys do this for me and I'll tell you how many of the four uh, behind the camera uh, people here today, if I were to ask you, raise your hand if you wanna be healthy, let me see what happens. Everybody, oh, I see Travis behind the camera there. There's five back there. Uh, yes, and listen, every one of you guys are gonna raise your hand. It's something that we all want and we know it's important for us to live. But it's kind of interesting. What if I could teach you beyond a shadow of a doubt that most people have no clue what it is? So then how can you attain it if you don't know what it is? We all want it. And so therefore, I was stimulated to even possibly look at doing a documentary and traveling all over and going to the health experts. And it's interesting because no matter where I travel, and I gotta speak, uh, no joke, next month I am speaking in Ireland. And I will ask them the same question I ask everybody. You know, what is health? And you're gonna find out, I can never get an answer. And that's the funny part, I'm not joking, I can never get an answer. And it's always some, you know, made up some thing that they heard or this, 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 and, and, and I've given people the permission when I speak, I say, listen, if you don't know, just say I don't know. Which leads now into the next thing of going, if you don't know what health is, how do you know if you're healthy? But if you have children, how do you know you're raising your kids healthy? And they're like, oh, it's a good perspective. And sometimes it even gets them offended because like, you're saying I'm doing something bad to my kids? No, I'm saying, for example, you're being led by the wrong perspective and it shows. You say, how do you, doc, how do you know it shows? Just like I ended this interview with the fertility, how are we doing? We have more sick kids, more kids have chronic illness over the last 20 years than ever in history. We are continually getting diseases younger as kids. And therefore, that's why you're seeing childhood cancers being at an all time high, childhood problems being at an all time high. They had to change the term adult onset diabetes for type two diabetes. When I started practice, that's what it was. They had to change it because kids are getting it now because they used to call it adult onset, which is type two diabetes, which for example, is young kids get it now. So therefore they had to change the diagnosis because chronic illness is getting younger and younger and younger and younger. Now I got a question for you. Um, can you be healthy and have diabetes? Absolutely not. I love when I ask this, I ask a person, are you healthy? And they'll say yes, and they'll have a diagnosis of cancer. You know, if I didn't have cancer, I'd be a pretty healthy person. You think I'm joking. Now, the reason why I bring this up is, is I've you now been interviewed now for a couple of documentary movies like that. And so I think in the near future, um, like I said, it would take a good year or two to do it. But you know something? I've been asking the question, what is health for 20 some years? And I believe that I've tracked that we're on. People are still not going to be led to the right ways because our dominant form of health care will never lead you health. That's why I kind of find it funny that we call it health care. No, we should call it disease management. Uh, disease management for huge profitability. That would be actually a really good way of actually explaining our current form of healthcare. Just huge amount of disease management for huge profitability. So, and that being said, that's why there's always a debate on who's gonna pay for healthcare. But actually health, believe it or not, is actually a lot cheaper than people think. You know, Sam, because you know why? 
because to keep it and maintain it is much, 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 much more of a cost saving thing than to lose it and try to rebuild it. So it's exciting to actually be on that um, upcoming uh, documentary that way. So please go to CHE TV and watch my interview. Uh, like I said, it's in our newsletter. If you check it out, uh, there's great things that you can see. I said some very impactful things that will not only affect fertility, but affect your health in general. So once again, thank you for a long, beautiful show with our wonderful team back there and all the people that contributed to the media team. Thank you for these wonderful slides from our amazing graphic artists. Uh, uh, thank you for all you guys constantly watching. Uh, let me see your feedback. Send us emails. Give us the comments below. We'll definitely look at them and take them very seriously. So you guys have a wonderful June 25th, is it? Yes. You guys enjoy. It's supposed to be beautifully hot today. Spend lots of time with your priorities, and I'll see you next week. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. Also, share this video with a friend. Once again, thank you for watching.